I don't know prep race. I think flashlight starts are stupid. I agree. <laughs> so, totally. I mean, it's hard to not think a flashlight start is stupid. <laughs> I What I hate about the flashlight start is how guys like you, who I feel like could cross over into no prep world, won't because of things like that. Little hangups like instant green or uh, flashlight start or, you know, because your car could no prep. Whether you want to believe it or not, no, it, it definitely totally could. could. Yeah, I, I, my car could probably do pretty well on a marginal track because it's got low torque mm-hmm. and it's got a power glide, so it doesn't have a crazy first gear ratio, mm-hmm. and it's got good suspension stuff. It would do pretty yeah. well, but I just don't, I don't really care to do it because you really have to be prepared to wad your car up. <laughs> yeah, especially at Yellow Belly. If you roll oh, up, God. if you roll through the beams at Yellow Belly. There's a chance your car's there's a higher chance your car's getting wadded up than Bradenton. Definitely. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. Yes. No, you gotta go. But not it. even by you. Yeah. Somebody like you could do everything right. Oh, you yeah. could make the pass of your life. <laughs> as as we've seen on my YouTube channel. We and saw somebody, that exact situation. And somebody leaves the light a second after you and just barrels through you or something. <laughs> yeah. Dumb. They didn't even leave next to you. It's and it's the adversity of not a prepped radial track where the car is predictable, right? Mm-hmm. So you get on a a marginal track, and it's a lot harder to get it to go down. Yeah. You know? And then there's a lot of no prep at all. So, like, yes, there's rubber here, but then outside there's actually nothing. Yeah. And if you touch that, that's when things go really bad. Like, you can get down on, like, rubber-ish but then once you hit bare concrete, you're slipping. Yeah, that's yeah, not there was, fun. I think it was like five cars wadded up this weekend at the race in, oh, don't get me lying. I talked to a guy about it this morning. He said it was like five or six cars got totaled at one race. I want to say it was in Louisiana somewhere. Yeah. But it was fresh concrete. Nobody had ever raced down it. And there's a few of those this year. Yeah. And I kind of feel like that could go one or two ways, like, if you get some rubber down early on, it could be pretty quick. But if you can't get that rubber down, then you may never get there, you know. Well, did you see fast. that race in Immokalee? Is it, was that the one last week? That was the one down here in Braden in Florida. Oh, okay. You, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're talking about a race in Texas. You're talking no, about Louisiana. Louisiana. Yeah. Yeah. But, but that the was one, this weekend. Immokalee, like a couple weeks ago, is like an hour south of here. The first the first three pairs crashed. Was that where the S10 plowed into the S10? Yeah, the wow. S10 ended up on its side and <laughs> then horrible. drove into the floorboard <laughs> yeah. of it. And then the kid who gets ran into is like, this is my first race car. I've never built anything. And ah, it sucks, dude. Yeah, I don't know. Obviously, there has to be no prep because guys like myself, not I want to say that I'll never be fast enough to radial race, but heads up radial racing is about how big your wallet is 90% of the time. Oh, for sure. You know. But no prep's getting like that as well. It is. It's not far from that. Yeah. You look at these, like, frame rails, like your boy freaking uh, Jason does at Tin Soldier, and you're like, wait, that's not a frame rail. That's a sheet of metal that (laughs) looks like a frame rail. (laughs) Hey, frame rail-ish, you know. It doesn't say how much of the frame rail or whether it can be fabricated or not. Oh, man. It's always so funny. The frame rail thing is always so funny to me because it's like, they built the car and then they put a frame rail in. Oh yeah. It. Is that John Sears, the guy who started X two seventy five, was on a podcast with Jason Terrell, Tin Soldiers, Jason Terrell. And uh he said, you know, what's the most innovative cheat you've ever seen? He said, Oh, one guy just had a piece of a frame rail zip tied to his car. You know, he's like I looked underneath there, it was like, I don't know if it was zip tied or maybe it was bolted to the yeah. to the you know, it's got you know, one and three quarter bars going through there, straight tube chassis stuff, and then he's got a piece of a frame rail six inches long just bolted to it. Like, not even from that car. Rail. Not yeah. even from the same car. It's it just... didn't say stock frame rail and stock location, never modified. Well, so. even stock style suspension, when they say style is weird, mm-hmm. I hate that. Because, yep. like, you get your Nissan 240 and you put a four link in the back of it, and you're like, well, it's a Fox body style. And I'm like, eh. I would say that's not stock style. Like stock style for the car. Like, right. yeah, you can do like a like a Fox body style front shock as well. But like, eh, eh, eh. I'm okay with the Fox body front shock, right? But what about you have a 
a factory unequal for link and you put an equal for link in it. Still factory? Because it's a for link. No. Not. I don't think so. But also, it's a you, dumb rule. <laughs> if you show up at a no time race, like an outlaw, yeah. is somebody going to, like, somebody has to, is somebody going to tech that? Like, that's the problem with, okay, so small tire gangsters, when we look at our rule set, I go, how can I slow these cars down without teching them? Yeah. And it always comes back to tire, straight up. Like, if I can't just look at a car and be like, you're good, you're good, you're good. You know what? Last year we had a class, we called it True Street. The only rule that I was really strict about is it must have a working radio. What are these guys doing? They're in the staging lanes wiring the radio. We just need 30 more seconds. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I was like, okay. And they said, does it have to play music? Does it have to? Bro, I just need to be able to hear fuzzy noise out of it. And it's a it's a radio. Like an actual have... radio or like <laughs> some no guy Bluetooth with his... speakers. <laughs> or you could get like a side-by-side one that bolts to a roll bar. Because like <laughs> they sound like. If some... they put that much effort in, I may let go. But I did have a no and Bluetooth it's just speaker still. <laughs> yeah, they should have done that. They're in there wiring stuff up, and, you know, you just... Well, like my um, uh, Nick Taylor, he had an external radio in his car. That was a good touch. He had speakers that were in the bumper, so he could play music pulling himself into the beams. Yeah, I like that. He had his own entrance music. That's awesome. That's a good move. Solid job, Nicky Bobby. I'm yeah. going to try that someday. I'm going to get to that point. I mean, they were probably like $30 speakers. <laughs> like they're... Yeah, but... They're you not gotta, expensive. You get those marine style speakers. Yeah. I mean, ask West Buck, you gotta protect the vibe at all costs, right? Yeah. And Play so, some copyright music. <laughs> so no one can film you. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Wes. Way to, way to put a DJ on the starting line at World Series of Pro Mod this weekend. I get my phone out and immediately just start yelling. Ah! <laughs> it's the music in the background. Well, let me give you a quick intro here. We already uh, started, but yeah. I wanna <laughs> I kind of like doing it sometimes this way where you start the conversation, then you give the intro. You kind of hook people a little bit more. Hook them. So if you're hooked, you know, comment down below. (laughs) So, guys, today we got Jimmy Dale, Tom Gunner. He is a rising star in the YouTube automotive (laughs) world, taking the internet by storm. Wow. Soon to be class racing, I imagine, (laughs) as internet personalities do. And then um, mostly no prep. No, no time. Do you consider yellow belly no prep? I mean, it's you know they don't spray prep, but it is prep. They do spray prep. Oh, they do with a handheld sprayer, like a bug sprayer. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And then uh, there's <laughs> there's no staff at yellow belly. Like you go to Bradenton, there's a water box guy, a track prep guy, a track manager guy, a guy at the scales at the end. There's a all this stuff at Yellow Belly. Imagine just the owner sits at the front door, takes your ten dollars, and then is like, "Have fun." <laughs> no rules. That's you why should, they call it the People's Track. You, you should know? make like an email, like a fake email support, <laughs> and see support what kind of stuff Yellow like Belly. people send, like yeah. angry emails, oh, like yeah. help at Yellow Belly. <laughs> like, yeah. I almost your... <laughs> drowned in the bathrooms when they over flooded. <laughs> you know, like, it's, yeah, you get everything. You can tell that it's time to probably roll when they start doing burnouts under the pavilions. It's mm-hmm. like, okay, yeah, it's getting a little rowdy in here. You know, maybe I'm going to head out. Your most recent video looked insane at Yellow Belly. Like, the entrance road was oh. wild. Uh, Thursday? To be backed up all the way to the highway is just on both sides? How and many passes are people even getting at that deal? If you show up and you try to make a pass... How likely is it that you get more than one? If you guys want to go race a yellow belly, you just come talk to Jimmy when you get there. I got you, bro. Unlimited passes if you're with Jimmy. But if you're just a guy and you just get in the staging lanes, maybe one, maybe none, maybe ten. That's actually how, like, the mafia works. (laughs) It's like, that's actually how they pretty much operated. You got to know a guy. You got to be a made man. Is there made men at? (laughs) So if you you know a guy, Jimmy... or Poland, or you know, any of my boys, right? Any of my people. You go the talk to line. my people, they'll take care of your people. But yeah, there's pretty much they have three lanes at Yellow Belly, and they'll tell you, please <laughs> people don't. People that leave. know Jimmy Dale, <laughs> people that don't. <laughs> no, no. It's three lanes of people who know of or may have talked to Jimmy Dale, but don't have a real race car and they're just sitting there and then they walk away from their car after they get in the staging lane. Yeah. So it's just a parking lot. And then all of Jimmy's people are going around the back gate. 
<laughs> so there's there's a back gate. Yeah. You can drive all the way around the staging lanes, and then we unlock the gate and we funnel my people in. <laughs> <laughs> Once we get our people in, we shut the gate again, and then the you know the regular people get to run after mm-hmm. that. So you know the scene uh, in Goodfellas when the cops are helping bring all the food in for him. Like he same exactly. He's got the ja- the wife's got the jacket with like salami. Like she's like funneling. That's it. <laughs> you got it. Or like they bring the table in for him. Yeah, it's very uh, mafia like. It's very mafia like, and then. We did the small tire gangsters race back in April. We're going to do another one in April. And once we filled the track, you know, I don't want to say it was at capacity. It sounds good. What is capacity? (laughs) What is capacity? It was probably past safety capacity, I would say. thousand percent. Like if there was an emergency. Oh. Not good. No. Yeah. No, no, no. Is there emergency staff there is there an ambulance sometimes yeah, is there a that, guy that knows cpr yeah, like if, yeah. if you're so they if used somebody to hire, needs cpr you go to jimmy dale <laughs> you gotta come talk to my guys no the uh there used to be like the cheapest ambulance guy you could get in town right but recently a flatbed they've truck. they've upped the you know safety stuff now they have the city of dallas comes out so you have a real ambulance there mm-hmm. with real emts in there the fuckery is that they're going to get stuck in the mud when they try to get to you. So, mm. you know, they're not going to be able to get there anytime soon. So if you wreck, just hold your breath. Somebody will be with you momentarily. Yeah, start working on yourself. <laughs> Keep a tourniquet in your vehicle. Yeah, call Jimmy first. <laughs> first thing to do is to call Jimmy. Find your phone, call Jimmy. Yeah, um, that, that's probably the best move. That track does, it does seem fun. It's a, a must experience type of event. Thousand percent. I seen Lyle Barnett this weekend in. This is somebody who races NHRA Pro Mod. He's racing on the highest level, arguably. Well decorated. You know, well decorated. Very, you know, I think anybody who's in drag racing probably looks up to Lyle Barnett. Unless you're competing with him, and then you're probably like, ah, I'm not, whatever. Yeah, that's true. I'd be Uh, curious to hear how Stevie and him interacted in the same class together. I don't know if that's ever happened. I haven't seen them next to each other, but I don't watch Pro Mod a lot. Yeah, I don't know if that's ever happened. Yeah. If you saw my betting record this weekend, not good. (laughs) At all. Horrible. And like, I feel like I don't know anything about Pro Mod, but the guy that I'm losing my money to has no clue. And he's just like, you pick. <laughs> Every time I lose, every time I pick the most, you know, I look at my phone. Oh, this guy qualified number one. He lost. <laughs> I, was like, I don't yeah. know a lot of, I, I'll probably know 20% of the field. Same here. Yeah, that's probably about it. The rest of the field, I, I don't know. Even the guys in the finals, I'm sorry, I I don't really know their whole deal as much. Yeah. And maybe that's honestly one of the issues with drag racing. With pro mod, you mean? With drag racing in general. Oh, yeah. yeah. When you're watching any drag racing, you're like, who are these guys? Yeah. It's most drag racing. We need more, we need more backstory. It sucks to get back to the hotel and it's like NBC's got horseshoe throwing on, like... Professional horseshoe. We can mm-hmm. have professional horseshoe throwing, but we can't have drag racing. Like, come on, man. This- well, I was getting frustrated at Flow, and I was talking to my wife this week, and I was like, it would be very simple if when there's downtime, they cut to, you know, three guys at a table, like an ESPN, and they're talking about the ladder. They're talking about the drivers. Yeah. Like, I'll cut, do it. Holler at me, Flow. Cut to somebody that, like, like when you're watching a football game and there's downtime, yeah. they cut to, like, five guys that know what they're talking about, mm-hmm. and they're going back and forth, like, what's going on, who's going to win, this, right. that. Like, they give you some backstory. This, mm-hmm. you're just watching a tractor. Yeah, I want to know who would just blew to... their motor up last race. Hey, this guy's back there putting a motor in right now. Yeah. You know, they came from North Carolina, but a guy in Missouri, he's got an extra motor in his trailer. They're hauling it through the pits right now i want to hear all that like the weather's not looking great for nitrous guys right today like let's hear this kind of stuff like yeah so and so is over the air density across the bottom it'd be so simple though for people to just talk and they don't have to be at the track they could be in a studio somewhere they could be they should be at the track yeah but they don't really have to be as long as they have the information yeah as long as they know what's going on back to you cooper yeah exactly just back to like somebody with some entertainment for sure i would love to see that because it would give a legitimacy to it yeah. as well well if flow won't do it maybe uh cletus hey tips and tricks bub freedom tips plus and tricks, freedom I, plus i wonder when all those contracts start to expire with these tracks and stuff Ugh, damn because they have contracts 
Freedom Plus looking real uh, investable right now. Yeah, it's a rising star as well. I mean, it's it's fixing to take over, I would say, because even at uh, World Cup Finals, Flo had issues. Like, Who's got World Cup Finals this year? Flo again? Yeah. They had the same deal yeah. where, like, I think this past weekend their trailer caught on fire. At World Cup, their trailer had a, a blackout. And just uh, like, yeah. We may need to get the tin, the tin hats out for this, but mm. I'm going to say it. People love to hate flow racing. I do. I do. Mm. Yeah, yeah. They love to hate I've it. often actually, I haven't called it on the podcast, but I've called this a hate cast before. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what we're doing? <laughs> oh, we got to let it out. Let the oh, out. man. <laughs> I'll tell you what. I'm not a nitrous guy. <laughs> oh, whoa. <laughs> <just kidding>. Jeez. <laughs> we'll I see you spoil right that to Johnny you. without it, all right? Like, go ahead. I, I might need the dump valve. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah. I yeah. might need the dump valves wide open for that deal. For sure. But, yeah, people do love to hate flow. But when they were free, when it was speed video, you couldn't really hate it. It was whatever. Nope, that's right. But when you pay for something, all of a sudden, you're a, a product. Modell said this weekend, she said, how can I watch your race? I just want to see you on, on the video. You know, I'm like, I'm not doing anything but standing on the starting line. But I saw she, you on the starting line. I, she said, I want, to, I want to see you. Okay. You can go to Flow Racing and let me know how much your membership is. She called me back. She told me how much it was a month or a year. We talked about over it, you know, both back of us, back and forth. Oh, what about this? And we're like, meh, meh. Mm -hmm. We didn't do it. Yeah. Well, I watch a good amount of racing, so I, I just I just bite the bullet on it. And probably not meant good to mention, but like <laughs> on my way home from like TX2K, like um, the first year I went racing myself, Watched it on the way home because I was out and there was still one day left of racing. And I was like, you know, I guess yeah. I'll just listen to it as I drive because For sure. I can get an extra eight hours instead of sitting in the stands. <laughs> yeah. I I would like to watch Ducks races. Uh, so Ducks race, World Series of Pro Mod. World Cup, TX2K. World Cup, they got 2K, a good FL2K. Small Tire Gangsters, Flow Racing. Will they be? Cletus Plus. No. Oh. No. I don't know. No. Well, you guys live feed your own stuff, right? No. No, you guys don't live feed it? No. You I don't know have that, anybody uh, that does it? Kyle's got us down for a maybe on 1320, so it's looking pretty promising, bud. But they'll just be there to film it. Yeah, that's yeah. just going to be a video after the fact, you know? Yeah, but that'll be cool. Yeah, that... that Dude, what Kyle's videos can do for your event is beautiful, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, that's big. And then I heard the that, live, though, is nice because I know they do that at, uh, what is it, North Carolina, those guys. They do a bunch of live feeds for yeah, all their races. Yeah, all of Corey Stamford's stuff. Yeah, Corey. Spooled Media. Mm -hmm. Spooled Media does a really good job, and he's really perfected it over the years, you know, with, like, the starting line, mid-track, you know, finish line yeah. video. And then they do at, uh, what was it, um, at Digger Die this year? He had the the guys, you know, his I think his YouTube or his his series is called The Table, right? Yeah. And so it's like the guys that are on his weekly podcast, The Table, are at the track, track side next to the camera. Any downtime would be them kind of shooting the shit about, oh yeah, so and so did this, that, the other. Yep. You know, it is wild it, to it's see important cars take flight. To add that. And then yeah, yeah, taking flight is nuts. Yeah. That is <laughs> yeah. Well, um, to add to the live feed, how funny was it when Flow went down? They got um, NC Pro Never Modern. heard of him. Yeah. I'm they, a fan now, though. They got him who wasn't allowed to do live feeds all like during competition. They called on him to break out his live feed gear to oh, live. Yeah. <laughs> break just, out his live feed gear. Broke it out. Hey. <laughs> oh, he's actually pretty legit, I think. I oh, think really? He's got some equipment. Oh, okay. My bad. My no, bad. no. I think he's got some. Every like, time I seen him, he just had his phone out. So maybe. I, I just thought it was just, just straight off the phone, you know? The, like, there was so many memes on Facebook about them breaking him out. Like, oh, dude. Like, <laughs> please, we need your help. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that was that was good. So It was the, heated when it went down because I was close to the inner circle of the people who it affected the most, you know, mm -hmm. Wes and them. And uh, yeah, it was it was a moment of stress for sure. And I think I was on the opposite side of that, where I made a post attacking them for going down. Of course, leave it to Cooper. He's going to blast you. Uh, have you fallen down recently? Leave it to Cooper. <laughs> well, listen, I mean, if you're going to have a race from, if you're going to have live feeds from, like, Thursday 
to Sunday, and then finals, you go down. Ugh, it's a bad You're look. good from Tuesday to Sunday, <laughs> but then. Yeah, five right rounds then, qualifying, but we whiff it first round. The second pro mod pulls into the beams for first round. Like, I would have been, oh. like, fail on Tuesday. Yeah, for sure. Like, fail early in the week on yeah. Thursday, whatever it is, like, early I, in the week. I don't really know what's involved in streaming or any of that stuff, you know. So I can only imagine how frustrating it is for all of Flow Racing, whether you're the guy holding the camera or whether you're the manager, whatever, because at the end of the day, Cooper's going to end up on Facebook <laughs> like the kid on The Simpsons. <laughs> That's you. That's you on Facebook. You're the ha <laughs> kid. Somebody's got to do it. <laughs> you got to hold these companies accountable. <laughs> yeah. There's got to be accountability here. Uh, Cooper's just pushing you to your best version of yourself. That's all I'm doing. I just all want right. the best for you. For you. <laughs> I just, this isn't me. for me. Yeah. Yeah, I turned off monetization on that post. It's not about me. <laughs> That's a lie. Yeah, it definitely is a lie. <laughs> but it didn't make that much. <laughs> made $42. Yeah. Man, really attacking flow this last week has really bumped up my profit margin. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. I don't attack many products, though. I, I'm really pretty gentle on most automotive products. I try to be. I think you. I name. think you know that they're few and far between, and that even if they're not doing the best job right now, they have most of them have the best intentions, and so we can't be attacking ourselves. You know. Yeah. Dirt track's gay, but everything else we're cool with, right? Wow. <laughs> but apparently, that's where Flow makes all of their money, is oh. mostly dirt track stuff. Oh, so they're the ones dumb enough to pay for it. Yeah, gotcha. so they have flow like like if you go on the flow app any weekend, there's like ten other things being streamed. Mm. It's not just drag racing. Yeah, so they're doing a lot. Competitive horseshoes. Yeah, all that kind cornhole. Of stuff. Those yeah, kind of the stuff people want to see. Oh, big curling guys, curling. You know? yeah, yeah, that's the stuff people tune into. <laughs> yeah, pickleball is a rising. <laughs> <laughs> You ever play any pickleball? <laughs> no, never played any pickleball, bud. You should uh, do a giveaway of something obscure like that, you know, like a uh, cornhole. <laughs> oh, not not a 1990 Camry rally car with a roll cage in it? Yeah, out of all the cars you could have given away, what was the concept behind that one? What are you talking about? There's no concept to any Jimmy Dale video. Every single one is just like, hey, I'm here. My phone's charged. Let's do something. You don't have like a big vision board of like all your different. <laughs> no. And then I'll, I'll watch, you know. You ever write anything down before you? No, dude. You you know, you become a YouTuber, become a YouTuber. You start YouTuber and you're like, I got to watch all these Mr. Beast uh, podcast where he talks about how to be a, a most efficient version of yourself and you watch Cletus on podcasts or you and yeah. you know people talk about making content and then you go to make your own content it's just like ah. yeah, you kind of have to carve your own path Definitely, I, that's kind of where it ends up you can't really listen to what other people have done and truly even attempt to replicate totally that. yeah I've really enjoyed YouTube it's I guess I've been well received on YouTube, which is crazy because so many people try YouTube and for the first video I, I put out to even have any traction was awesome, you know, yeah, and I got a good even, title. Did people know you at all before you put that out? Like, were you already doing stuff on like Instagram or any other platform? Or no, it just no like Instagram. Right to YouTube. Didn't have Facebook. Uh, I mean, I had my personal Facebook, but I didn't have, like, Jimmy Dale Racing Facebook page. And you know what it was? It was like, okay, I'd spent a whole year. Do you know Barrett Green? Mm. Big Hat Mafia? Yeah, yeah. I don't know him, but I know him. Okay. Him. Barrett Green and Michael Hollis, two hometown heroes back from where I'm at, they both call me one day, and they're like, hey, bud, what's up? You want to go be on Street Outlaws next week? Yep. So we did the Street Outlaw it's deal. A famous guy phone call to get. Oh, dude, it felt great. Yeah. So uh, I tell my old lady, and she's like, that's so cool. This would be awesome. So we go do Street Outlaws, you know, film one, one episode. We're home, and all my buddies, because I got a bunch of fast buddies, because I'm from no prep, small tire stuff. Famous right? guy. No, no, no. I'm just the slow guy that's like, you know, not fast enough to be on the dream team. But like, yeah. if there was a minor league to the dream team, I'd be somewhere in like that. So I have a bunch of buddies. They're all fixing to go to Vegas. You're like right on the bench in the dugout. Yeah, like, yeah. Like waiting. 
Yeah. Put me in. Like that movie where the kid can hit a home run, but he can't run the bases. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's me, right? So uh, I filmed Street, uh, Street Outlaws for like a whole year of chasing TV, which is the dumbest thing, but whatever, it happened. It's over with. And it was a good experience. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Show me how not to do it. And so I did that whole deal. And in the same time, I start working for Nitrous Express. And in working for Nitrous Express, pretty much, like, they sit me down. They're like, look, your job title is to push the company as far forward as possible and do whatever you need to do to make that happen. So at the time, I'm watching Billy, you know, old man. I'm watching everybody within the industry who's YouTubing and stuff. Like, oh, how can we make relationships with this guy or with this guy or, you know, so on and so on. And how can we get Cooper to run Nitrous Express? And the first one that I really locked down or whatever was Billy and Bill. And after Street Racing Channel and you know, Old Man Garage started running Nitrous stuff, I was just the guy who worked at Nitrous Express who was their guy, like their, their representative. Contact, yeah. I was their contact. And me and Bill became good buddies talking shit every night and he's like dude you have to start a youtube channel like you don't have a choice you have to start a youtube channel if you don't start a youtube channel you'll just be a fucking has-been a guy that was on tv one year and never did anything with it and you're talking bill old man bill old man yeah he's he seems honest oh he's honest whether you like it or not he's gonna give you the beans yeah even if you didn't ask for him even if you asked for him to not give you the beans he's still gonna give them to you so but yeah, he's a great friend of mine. And so he really pushed me to do the whole YouTube deal. He's like, bro, every day you don't do YouTube, you're just burning money, you know? And back where I'm from in Texas, there's this, well, maybe down here too, it's like Ashley Furniture, I think was the place. And there were these old commercials where this guy would be like, and if you're not shopping at Ashley Furniture, you're burning money. And at the end of the commercial, it'd be like 500 bucks and hundreds like on fire. Just burning. <laughs> Just burning. If you don't chew big red. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so we went to, a, we were going to a race that weekend. I was like, okay, I'm going to make a YouTube video. So I just filmed everything that day and smacked it all together. I tried to do a voiceover in my first video. Nice. And like, you know, you do the voiceover, you're like, oh, that's not it. Oh, that's not it. I probably did 30 takes of it. And eventually I do the voiceover. I'm like, I'm tired of doing this damn voiceover. So this is what you fucking get. <laughs> and then, like I left it in yeah. there and people were like, ah, I love that. Yeah. You know, the honesty. Doing so. like a voice. The only way I've ever found to do a voiceover that works is you make the whole video and then you mute it you hit play and you record yourself talking as it goes through that's what i did that's the only way i've ever found that it works i could not nail it down so eventually i just yelled at the phone was like i'm sick of doing this and i told them how i felt when i was doing Mm -hmm. it you know people like that i i think i got really lucky at the end of that race there was a fight you know, nah. <laughs> nothing, nothing will sell you, dude. Like, Someone got lucky punch. in that deal. <laughs> yeah, it worked out Those great. Those two guys me. don't even realize they kicked off a YouTube channel. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Both of my buddies. Oh, you know, okay. A guy from New Mexico and another guy, and it's pretty much like, we just messed you up. He's like, you didn't mess anything up. He's like, yeah, we did. <laughs> Dink, I'm tired of arguing mm. with you. I'm going to swing. And... Drag so, racing fights aren't as common as circle track fighting, though. No. So yeah. a little bit. Of, if circle track is definitely guy, hockey of drag racing. There's a lot of fights. Yeah, for sure. Drag racers are a little more docile, I'd say. Yeah. A little I, bit. I like to tell people that we race with back home, like, you know what? I may be upset with you right now, but I plan on living here my whole life, and we're going to have to drag race next to each other my whole life because this is my passion. Hmm. And this is what I want to do my whole life is drag race. So... If we can't figure out how to get along, like, I'll stay over there on that side of the track. You do whatever the heck you want to do. Yeah. But, yeah. I've always, you know, I'm friends with most people, pretty much everybody at the track. And I think that that's also because I'm not fast enough. Oh, I I, I think I have the same issue. You know what I mean? I feel like the guys that are really fast end up with, like, you know, beefs and squabbles with people. But, like, I feel like because I'm kind of middle, bottom of the pack, I'm not, Mm. like making enough waves to really yeah, yeah. I think get if, anybody to now, hate Now, if me. you and me rolled into the racetrack 
and we were thousands, not a few hundred dollars, but thousands of dollars in the hole the second we rolled in. I am. The density would already be like, I am. Oh, oh you are? You're, I mean, my car is thousands of dollars. Yeah, like I'm in the hole usually. No, when no, I pull no. Into the I'm beans. talking about to go racing. Okay. Fuel, generator gas, diesel, yeah, yeah. toter home gas, entries, class entries. I think a lot of people also don't realize that, like, you know, I do this to have fun. And I enjoy racing, right? So that's kind of the 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 whole undertone is like fun and enjoyment. Yeah. Whereas some people is like competitiveness only. Oh, dude. And I... like, yes, competitive is good, but like, if you lose and you're so frustrated loading up your stuff that you just like run out of there that you're so pissed, like, you're not gonna enjoy racing. Dude, I don't know like, what you gotta lose was. and be able to go watch and hang out. Still, I think. Yeah, I'm normally pretty good at losing. But there was one race, it was at Texas Motorplex, and I don't remember exactly which one it was, but boy, I was angry. Like, almost throw the helmet, but I can't afford a new helmet, so I'm not going to throw it, but I really want to throw it. You know, that kind of, I was heated. It was one of those things, like, I don't know if we were index racing, I think that's what it was, we were index racing of some sort, and I had the guy beat, you know, the whole way down there. And I knew that I couldn't break out, but for whatever reason, I let out of the gas and, like, slowed down, and he just barely nipped me. Uh -huh. And, like, so I totally screwed myself on it, and I was angry at myself, which I think I've pretty much let that go for the most part. For Maybe the most part. a little bit. Yeah, the you more you win, the more right? you want to win. That's another yeah. issue. Like, two years ago, we won 14 events with Magic Johnson. 14 events? That is insane. That's a lot of weekends. I race every single weekend. I can. Yeah. Every race, you know, if I can afford to race, I'm racing. So two years ago, I won 14 events. Last year, I won 10 events. This year, I won one already. Like, I race a lot. You're kind of on the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks. You're Thanks. Kinda... <laughs> Thanks. My but you're, to... you're a little too zoomed in. We need to zoom out <laughs> a little bit, you know? Your stock's going down. <laughs> oh, come on. You're focusing too much on yeah, YouTube, yeah, I yeah, think. Yeah, yeah, But you need to tell yourself that I did more harder <laughs> races last year. You see, in the, this decade, the difficulty I've won went so up. Much. <laughs> the race wins went down while the difficulty of the races went up. Maybe you need to look at how much money was won. Maybe that's gone. No, it. that is a negative thing to look at because then you start looking at how much was spent next to how much was won, yeah. and that is always a lose. You know situation. what's really sad is, is you win money and then you get a 1099 in the mail. Like a W two or something, whatever Ugh. it is. I think it's a ten ninety nine, and then Don't they're like, me started. I'm like, oh, why did you send me this? Yeah, that's not nice. It, <laughs> it was a, it was a pinky high. Really felt like a badass this year. I'd won a last year. I won an event at Thunder Valley in Oklahoma. They ten ninety nine your ass, and so I filled out the whole ten ninety nine, and then you know six months later we're back over there and I won another class. So I doubled up at Thunder Valley last year. The second time I go in there, everybody's filling out their 1099. They're like, no, Jimmy, you're good, bro. Here's yours. Like, here's my check. Oh, hey. Yeah, they like, hey, got you. Hey, you don't have to fill one out. They're like, no, no, he won back in May. And He's in the system. Have, He's in the system. Yeah, <laughs> they already he got, got you online, like, ah, dude. Horrible, you know. Yeah, that's the bummer about winning money. You got to pay taxes on it when you oh, win. Oh, dude. Unless you're Meta like the just freak. sent me a freaking 1099. Yeah. Like, get out of here, bro. I made $400 for the year. What are you 1099 and $400 for? That is the unfortunate thing about this. Like, I have like 12 1099s. It's like, <laughs> it's like, God damn it. Like, why just... do you keep why do you keep paying taxes? This is horrible. I know. I've been trying to say it's theft this whole time, but they don't care. I keep what, saying taxes. What if you just theft? never paid taxes and then just waited until they audited you and then be like, oh, I didn't understand how to pay it. So, you know, let me know what I owe you. It's worked Put out fine for plan. Al Sharpton. He hasn't paid taxes in years. Oh, I don't know who that is, but good for him. Yeah, he's doing great. He's yeah. he just I think because maybe he goes by maybe if you switch your channel to a uh, preacher, like you know, you gotta oh, be like that's a you good know that idea. Joel Olstein guy, dude? Pfft, yeah. Guys. Peak profit from preaching. No tax. There's no tax on that. It's like 503. Can't tax God, huh? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know and that. He's got like two planes, a bunch of books. I need to tell my 10 soldiers boys to change the channel as soon as possible. Yeah, just make it full. <laughs> just make it full religious and you're good. Maybe uh, you can get away with that. Because we've talked about that, you know, avoiding the EPA by saying it's for religious reasons. Uh, I have this 
race car for religious purposes. That's a good point. I like it. What are you going to do? What are you going to you going to tell me I can't I don't know. praise God on a Sunday the way that I do? By drag In the racing. beams. In the beams. <laughs> like I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> yeah. It should work. <laughs> I don't even have anything to say to that. I feel like uh, I feel like you uh you get away with a much tighter budget of racing than most, which is really cool to watch. For sure. Because the people that have big budgets are usually more unhappy as well. Yeah. And I see that. And like not yeah, like you're able to get away on like a tighter budget, yeah. a not crazy complex car. No. And there's obviously like as it's taken off, there's companies that have made it easier for me to go racing, mm -hmm. which is all I could ever ask from any company. It was just like, hey, make it a little easier for me to go racing because I'm not like making yeah. great money Topping off of YouTube. Topping off nitrous bottles is nice. Yeah, like so Nitrous Express being, you know, willing to help with a little bit of nitrous stuff and then it's a it's a great relationship where I scratch their back, they scratch mine, right? I sell a bunch of nitrous stuff. They, you know, help me fill bottles like cool, great. Um there's, there's a bunch of them. I could sit here and Ricky Bobby it out real quick and just list them all out if you'd like me to, but they definitely make it a lot more approachable to go racing. Yeah. And then <clears throat> most recently, there's a guy, his name's Gary White, and he owns that. You see me drive that car called Nitrous Cowboy, which, great name for Nitrous Cowboy. Is it the car. black F-Body? Yeah, black yeah. F-Body. F-Body boys now. F-Body, dude. Yeah, I'm in the gang, dude. It's the best body. Yeah, yeah it is for <laughs> sure, so... He's got this big block, small tire, nitrous Camaro, and he works in the oil field. Like, he owns an oil field company, and he spends 360 days in the middle of nowhere in New Mexico. So he wants his race car to be raced. He wants to be a part of the industry. He wants to be in it. Yeah. But he can't be hands-on. He can't, you know, the Monday through Friday, he can't be sitting there wrenching on it and doing all that work. And that's where, like, Raska works on it. A majority, I would say, like, Raska Motorsports does a lot of the, like, this week, front shocks, rear shocks, transmission rebuild, and a new shifter. Got one of them hot boy M&Ms. Mm, yeah. Mm. You ready to shift that thing? That. Well, it's going to auto shift. It's going to auto shift. It's got to. Yeah. He I, sent me a video last night. You're going to be able to shift this fast? I was like, no, that's, that's why it's connected to the yeah. CO2. Because you, know, you no, can't really not. shift the M&Ms yourself. Like, they kind of, like, they are really know. are only happy being shifted by the air. Like, they're not, oh, yeah. like, they're not really designed to manually Cars shift. already got onboard CO2, so it's just, you know, a, a T fitting into the CO2, mm -hmm. and now it's got 900 PSI or whatever PSI. Let the ECU do it. it. Yeah, yeah, let the, the grid do it, which, I mean... To you Holly guys, the, the people using a grid are like two stones smacking them together to make fires. Yeah, what? It's got an MSD grid in it? <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> what? Yeah. Are you tuning on that thing? Uh, Really, Raska does a majority of the tuning, and then I sit there and second guess all his choices, mm. which I'm sure he fucking loves that. And, uh, yeah, we, we all work together, and w we always get into these races where the turbo guys are like, well, what do your draggy say? I don't know. Like, oh, you don't want to tell me? That's cool. You don't have to tell me, bro. I'm like, no, I don't I don't use a draggy. What kind you know? of no-time guy is asking another no-time guy what he, he ran? No, what kind of no-prep guy is asking another no-prep guy what time he ran? I guess. Is there the a... No-prep guys are really sherry about how fast they're going. <sighs> That's really so weird. Because, like, Why? the no-time community is so strict, but I feel like they're overlapping communities. Yeah, but the no prep guys are too busy drooling at the mouth and running off an of instant green to even think about how fast this guy's going to that guy. So yeah, they may ask in the pits. That's funny. Yeah. I didn't realize it was so sherry. And it's then there's also, sherry. there's no time guys too that'll post like half of a slip. And I'm like, that's, what are you doing? That's jank. Yeah, <laughs> I don't post know. It. No time might as well be Radio vs. World in my opinion because... Uh, it's hard to imagine no time and not think of the fastest no time cars on the planet. Yeah. Right. When you say no time, I immediately think the baddest of the bad. Right. Yep. Like Troy Perez Jr.'s nitrous. <laughs> You're like Corvette. It's like, okay, it's no time, but like that's a 900 cubic inch Nelson competition engine. It's rowdy with nine foot flames coming out of it. Yes. That's another <laughs> thing we talked about earlier. It couldn't fit radial versus world because it's too light. 
Yeah. Like, so it's a no the, time that's car. That's the no time cars. They're yeah. too light for class yes, racing. Exactly. So and they're too big of engines. Yeah, it's Radio Versus the World on kill. And so you see how fast Radio Versus the World's going. So no time. No time's close. <laughs> yeah, the they're right part. there on it. At least like prep to no time is yeah. very close. Because then there's no prep to no time. Yeah, there is some no prep, no time. But like, I feel like no time is big money grudge races. Like, they're talking like $100,000 a side, $20,000, $40,000 a side, like crazy numbers that are just can't even wrap your head around. You know, like, well, that race where they were giving out golden tickets, the um, another one of Corey's races. King of the right? South. Yeah. Yep. That That's race be awesome. is no prep as well, right? I, it's like kind of prep, right? I understand it as slick prep. I don't know what that is. Oh, man. I just slick imagine prep. the Facebook posts of people – you know, posting a photo of a tractor going down the, the prepped, the track like prepping. Oh man, they're gonna be like, oh what the heck? Cause you remember when that happened at no uh, no prep kings? They were spraying in <laughs> Vegas, and people were pissed. I'll tell you, I've made passes at no prep kings, and it is one of the worst services I've ever gone down. Really? It's bad. For me, it was bad. This is the guy who shows up on radials. Mm. I'm like, I can make them go down. Nah, I got this. Yeah, I got this. <laughs> yeah, when you were s- super slow. No, yeah. not as slow, but still pretty slow. Like your car is a ha- almost a half a second faster than my car has ever been. We're not talking times. We're no time guys. Yeah, come on, guys. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Don't even don't, don't even try to look up my time slips. <laughs> See my classified documents box up there. All my time slips, dude. Classified. Oh, yeah. classified I don't documents. want anybody looking in there. I'm not looking, but I keep them next to my Corvette. I don't want to get shot. Documents. That's for sure. Yeah, I keep them locked away. Definitely don't. But Do yeah, you even have time slips? <laughs> bunch of sharing time slips. Well, I was telling you about the nitrous cowboy car. Yeah. yeah. So we're at this like no prep small tire event. They're starting at the 60 foot. Guy asked me, you know, what'd your draggy say? I don't know. And well, how do you tune it? Like, if you don't have any draggy data at all, like, we just look at the video and then I tell them how it felt in my butt and just, yeah, that sounded horrible. How it felt in my butt. I tell them how it felt in my butt. And then, <laughs> me and my tuner have a very close relationship. We're very close. <laughs> I've had like tuners this. like that too. <laughs> yeah, so we tune it by the seat of my pants and it, it doesn't works. have a G meter or anything? No. No. You can G- put a G meter in it. And yeah, that costs something we don't have money. So, we don't have that. I mean, a G meter is pretty nice. I don't have one in my car, but for tuning, it seems like the best. It does seem good. And I feel like if you can carry the G the whole way down, you're like, okay, you're actually doing something opposed to just like. Yeah. Well, I've heard of misconceptions place. too, where people are like, oh, it was on a pass. And then they're like, well, the G meter shows it actually wasn't going as fast <laughs> just because. You know, drivers are dumb most of the time, me yeah. included. Oh, yeah. Almost the, all the, the time. The more all over the place it is, it felt like it was flying. I was driving that thing. I was driving. You see him one-handed, like, <laughs> Dude, sawing the wheel? You did, I don't know if you saw it because the live feed was so spotty, thanks, Flow Racing. But uh, him. Chuck55 made a pass yesterday. It looked like a typical MBK pass. Got out there 100 feet, had to pedal it, car went sideways. He never lifted. He's just like. Nice. Just sawing out oh, the wheel. Oh, sawing at it. Well, they're always like wheel and parachute lever. Oh, you're right. Like you're both. Right. So they're one hand to drive in almost all the time. Yeah. And it's just their normal thing, which is weird. Like, I, I know Justin Swanstrom always puts his parachute on a lever still, even though you could put it on a button. Yeah, it's on a but button. But if you in get the crossed car. up. Yeah, you're not going to get the button. You're not going to get the button, yeah. right? I, do you remember, I think it was right when Swanstrom started his YouTube channel, hit, uh, Big Country's like yelling at him about, you drive with one hand, one hand. And he's trying to get him to drive with one hand so the other hand yeah. stays up here the whole time, you know? See, I can drive with one hand. Like, you know, people are like, you got to put both hands on. Like, I'll, I'll shift. And then, like, it's, yeah. it's going so slow. It feels yeah. like after that many passes, you're just like, hey, okay. And how, I call it smacking elbows. When someone gets real out of shape, I call it smacking elbows because, you know, you yeah. end up with this situation. You're smacking elbows, bud. You're, it's over with. On a, on a radial tire, too, like if, if it gets out of hand, it's out of hand. Totally. On a slick tire, you can try to recover it a little better. Yes. 
but you're kind of done on a radial. Just yeah. get off the gas. You're right. You're just totally. done. 100%. Give it up. You've lost that pass. Yeah. But that's what's kind of cool about the even like the big tire pro mods. They can kind of save it a little bit. Yeah. And pedal it, especially first round. There was a lot of pedaling. Yeah. Once that's it was what. Hot. Yeah. There was a lot of pedaling. It was really a driver's game. It was. It heat. was awesome. It's fun to watch that. I know. It is cool. It. I feel like five years ago, if you asked me about Pro Mod, I'd be like, that's stupid. I don't want to see anything. But like now I'm kind of coming around to it. We need to do what I've you talked around. about earlier. We need to learn the drivers more. We don't know the driver's stories. We need to know them more, you know? Yeah. This guy, you know, works for a trucking company. This guy does this. He's from this part of the country. His dad was so-and-so. We need the backstory to really feel invested or you just go full WWE, and they all have <laughs> a name. There's already and somebody a going WWE. Backstory. We don't have to do that. <laughs> made up backstory. You know that yeah. South Park episode where all the kids were. Oh, man, I don't know if I've seen that one. I've seen a lot of South Park. <laughs> South Park, <laughs> they do the fake WWE, and the, I don't know if I've seen that. It's a good one. They're like, he got my cousin pregnant. <laughs> oh. Fighting about it. No, but I went to bed last night watching the. I guess it was the grudge between Macho Man Randy Savage and Jake the Snake. That's what we need in That's in, what uh, we need. Drag racing. It is what we need. Yeah. I need to see Lyle come over and get somebody bit by a cobra. <laughs> I was thinking a chair. Oh yeah, yeah. That'd <laughs> Could be Could you perfect. imagine at the top end interview? Oh, just somebody rolls dude, up with a Oh my gosh, that's all about it. He came with a chair. <laughs> Pulls a chair out of his passenger seat, like out yeah. of the passenger side of the car. DDT, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. That could be pretty uh pretty lucrative. Yeah. I think NPK could capitalize on this the best. I think they could the best because their their people will fall for it. Yeah. You know? <laughs> They'd be like, I can't believe it. <laughs> We'll be at TX2K. Maybe we can, uh, maybe oh, we can orchestrate some. Yeah, you, neither one of us are built to take a metal chair to the back either, though. But I don't know if people know this. We're not built for that. There's so. nobody filming at the top end, and we're just fighting. <laughs> I'm in. I'm totally in. Yeah, so you're going to TX2K this year, right? Yeah, Allegedly. Yeah, anybody got any padded chairs, hit me or Cooper up. <laughs> we're going to need some padded chairs. Yeah, that'll be something going down. Yeah, I'll be at Texas 2K this year. Uh, I've never done a Texas 2K, but <clears throat> it's like Texas 2K 11. Me and all the boys are in the Honda Accord, like six deep, you know, <laughs> weed smoke just bellowing out going down the highway. Trying to keep up with supercars. <laughs> Trying to keep up with big turbo <laughs> supercars. <laughs> We're just mad and, you know, 110. <laughs> <laughs> it won't go any faster. <laughs> Trying to, oh, my gosh, you see that? Got our phones filming this way, you know, stuck out the camera. Yeah. yeah stuck out the window. Well, you so, know that, um, that, like, meme of, like, People don't realize, but Honda Accords are actually really fast. <laughs> <laughs> Not the 90s ones. No. Oh, yeah. I know the guy you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, the guy. is like, people don't yeah. get it. <laughs> Not with six people in it and no turbo. It's I'm sure horrible. back then you were like, people don't get it, but these cars are pretty impressive. <laughs> uh, yeah, that, that sounds like all the Ford Probe guys back in the day. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, have you ever driven a Ford Probe? No, it's it's a Probe. So I've never know. gotten the privilege to spend any time around a Ford Probe owner. <laughs> oh, yeah. Do you I think they a... still brag about it? <sighs> I don't know, dude. I play a little PUBG mm. in, uh, when I have time for Xbox, rarely, but... Um, Not Fortnite, PUBG? No, nah, PUBG guy, yeah. So I play a little PUBG, but the other night I was talking to this guy, and somehow I got brought up what we do for a living. I was like, oh, I do YouTube. I try. And uh, you're on the he's channel like, oh, I watch right YouTube. And he's like, oh, you got a Mustang. And he, he starts telling me about how he had a Dodge Stealth. He's like, and then he hit me with... People don't know, Bo. Dodge Stealth is pretty quick, bro. Pretty fast. Yeah. He's like, yeah, cold air intake, like muffler delete, no cat. It's like, damn. People underestimate the Dodge Stealth. I told you him. You see dozens <laughs> of them around. Still alive? No, I don't know the last time I ever saw a Dodge Stealth just like somebody just like using it as a vehicle. <laughs> they're all race vehicles. Like now. at least people make fun of Miatas, but like they're still alive and kicking. Yeah. Every Miata that was ever made is still on the road somewhere. For sure. I think they have a 100% success rate. <laughs> yeah, they do. Yeah, they do. <laughs> but you never see a Dodge Stealth. No. Nope, Even Dodge like an Stealth. SRT4 Neon. You don't see it. Uh, those didn't make it either, but those were so cool. 
they are pretty great. They, they are pretty cool. They make great noises. I had one for a brief stint, and I enjoyed it. Oh, I yeah? got rid of it, which was also enjoyable. <laughs> you know, like when they say... I remember that. Yeah, yeah, it was like a brief... Like, it's kind of like owning a boat. There's two great days of owning yep. a boat. The day you get totally. it and the day you sell it. Totally. Same with a neon. Yep. The day you get it is fun. The day you get rid of it is also fun. Man, I've had three boats and enjoyed every single one of them, but... Yeah, there was one I had to get rid of because we were trying to buy our house. And it's like, okay, am I going to get rid of my race car or my boat? First one problems, you know. Boat, race car, which one are you getting rid of? Went with the boat. Probably should have gone with the race car. I don't yeah. know. Who knows? It wasn't yeah. magic. It, it wasn't the car that started, you know, my whole new career, so to speak. But that car is the same car I would ride my motor scooter across town to work on when I was in high school. Magic or? Magic. So, did you you know the story? My no. my best high school friend, you know, best friend in high school, his dad uh, had a big block Nova, and he told him, you know, hey, quit being a fuck up, and we'll build you a race car. And so he for six months got his shit together, you know, before it went back to wilding out. And his dad, you know, they started building a race car. So every day we were over there working on this purple Mustang, who I also ended up owning it for a short period. But uh, we worked on this purple Mustang, and eventually the motor, trans, rear end, everything was done, but the purple Mustang was not done. We were so far off. And so the guy's name's Lloyd. Lloyd walks into a shop in Texas called Speed Tech, and there's Magic Johnson. Well, what I call Magic Johnson, sitting in the showroom, like, flawless right wheelie bars parachute you know yeah yeah. 2005 looking oh yeah yeah so he buys this car i want to say he paid like 10k for it as a roller put all his stuff in there and boom we're off to the races so we raced a class called uh texas true 10.5 it's like 10.5 tire racing Mm -hmm. back in the late 2000s and 10 years goes by and i get a phone call from shawnee boy and he's like, dude, my dad's retiring. My mom sold the daycare. They're moving to the sticks. He's selling everything. He, I was like, okay. And he's like, You're, you got to go buy the Mustang, buy the Mustang. I was like, oh, I ain't got money for that. Like, that's a real nice race car. There's no way I could ever afford that. Mm-hmm. Oh, this may get you demonetized. So you may have to clip this part out. <clears throat> should we Should we go there? Yeah. I'm go in. there? I'm in. All right, the, so. You guys... Well, I'll tell them then. So if there's nothing from here on out, it'll only be on Spotify. <laughs> <laughs> so me and Modell took a little bit of magic. All right. You know, the magic that grows up out of the ground. Yeah, yeah. You know? And uh, we eat these Magic Johnsons, right? Mm-hmm. And we're jumping around the house and squealing like little kids, you know, and laughing and just being on mushrooms. And... Uh, I come out, and I got, you know, a stack of cash. I'm like, babe, let's go buy Lloyd's Mustang. And any other time, she'd be like, put that money up. Don't get that out again. You know, that is our rainy day fund. You are not spending that. And she says, okay. So the Johnnies wear off a little bit. Not all the way, but a little bit. Yeah. I call Lloyd up. I'm like, hey, I want to come make you an offer on your Mustang. He's like, come on. I show up, I'm like, I got $10,000. He's like, yeah, you do, because it's all yours. I ain't taking that. <laughs> he laughs at me. So we, we go back and forth and back and forth. And long story short, I end up getting the car. And the only reason I got a good deal on it is because he's like, well, I lost the title to the car. I was like, damn. And he gives me this manila envelope, like this big, huge manila envelope. I get home, and... I got the race car. I'm looking thrilled. It's like my childhood dream car that I actually worked on and was the crew guy. I was pit yeah. bitch in high school. And I go through all those documents, title sitting in there. Yes. So I got the title. Yeah. It all worked out. And then a few months later, you know, we're filming Street Outlaws. And the next thing you know, we're doing YouTube and. Was it like when you got it, like it already had like a bunch of cage and stuff in it? Yeah, it's literally how it sits right now. Yeah, because I, I don't know how much cage is in it right now, I guess. 850, 850. sir. Mm-hmm. Probably mild steel then. Yep, the mild yeah. steel, 850. It's got like the, what was the coolest shit in the early 2000s, late 90s. If you had the X bar in yeah. the back of your hatchback car, 
boy. You were highfalutin. Dude. <laughs> you cool were doing as can it. be. Yeah. And nowadays, like, you know, that makes no sense. I feel a lot of these stories we've gotten so far very different than how you did your Tin Soldier podcast. <laughs> oh, I can't be like, hey, guys, let me tell you about this. <laughs> a lot different. Oh, yeah. Every podcast I've been on is all, all a little bit different, for yeah, sure. Yeah, there's definitely the, uh, the variance there, because we were talking about that earlier, how trying to make them different. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I think we're doing a good job. I think this is definitely... Um, I was going to say, though, the Magic Johnson, I guess that's where the name came from. I was hoping it had something to do with AIDS somehow. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, but they, for a short term, you know, we, we would beat somebody and then somebody would go by and be like, you got AIDS. <laughs> and that's a horrible joke. There's nothing like the, funny about the that. The nitrous was what you considered the AIDS, maybe. Oh, the nitrous? Yeah, it's an AIDS. It's, well, it's an AIDS. It, it's you're really header. hating on the nitrous. No, right I now, use bud. nitrous. No, it's, it's an AID. It, it aids your NA motor. It's the cheapest power adder on the planet to get into hands down. I keep a nitrous bottle right there. I'd like for you to hold it up. Okay. <laughs> I didn't think you would. Sure. You see? I'm just happy you're running nitrous. I right? am. I don't care what brand you're running. I'm just happy you're spraying something. I mean, realistically, the brand of nitrous that I run is whatever the local speed shop has. No, I'm talking about your components. I know. I know. You know. Um, but... Nitrous is funny because you're not like it's not like fuel where you're running like a brand of fuel. You're just running whatever the local place could get. Definitely. I've been trying to get Garrett's brother, Parker, to get me some medical grade nitrous. Oh yeah, it may hit a little harder, right? It may. No, I don't you think know? so. <laughs> yeah, them nitrous guys would have already been doing that for sure. Oh uh, I don't know. Like the Pro Mod guys. <laughs> I if don't they know, could get a better nitrous. There used to be, you know, when you're a nitrous guy, that's when you really start getting into the world of like, well, I know a guy and it may have fallen off a truck or, mm -hmm. you know, I feel like the turbo guys like all have their polo shirts on and they're all like, oh, I'm a businessman and oh, I do business. And the nitrous guys are like, yeah, but I got a guy. And yeah. <laughs> not just guys in the sleazy ones, for sure. They also know exactly how many minutes to a T it takes to change a spark plug. <laughs> All of eight of them. <laughs> yep, and we're the only They do ones. a lot of that. That's the other flip side of it, though. It's getting expensive because, dang, spark plugs yep. have gone to, like, 10 bucks a freaking plug. Dude, that's from, what like, switched me bucks. from being, uh, I used to be an LS carbureted nitrous kid because I grew up LS carbureted stuff. So it's like that's what I knew, and then that was when spark plugs were a dollar twenty five. Now no bullshit, they're nine ninety nine. It's crazy. Eight ninety nine. It's like NGK. What are you doing, bro? Yeah, that's a that's a steep, steep deal. I almost never change spark plugs on my Camaro. Mm, almost never. It. I admire that. I should do it more. My tuner. Yeah. If he's listening, he's probably not thrilled. <laughs> you know, I won't ever change them. working, what do you need to change them for? If there's a problem, I'll change them. Like, and, and I feel bad sometimes I've checked them and put them back, which is also like a, a no no if you're a nitrous guy. You don't look uh, at them things and put them back. I do. Yeah. When you're balling on a budget, you do some dumb stuff, you know? And yeah, they're freaking 10 bucks a plug, man. I'm yep. glad I have six of them. Hey, if I pull it out and it's still got some white on it, it's going back in. Imagine you got There's like a no V10? way around it. Huh? You got like a V10 guy? You know, there, that's a oh. lot of plugs. Yeah, oh, I couldn't even. Or even those Hemi guys? Yeah, couldn't imagine. <laughs> Two plugs per cylinder? <laughs> yeah. The, just seeing the level of nitrous racing that we saw this weekend with the Pro Mod stuff, these guys are really committed. Really committed. Yeah, when you gap like 45 plugs before you go for the weekend. Oh, you guys are gapping plugs? Yeah. Uh, I mean, kind of wing it a little bit, you know? <laughs> oh, yeah. Try not. Yeah. I use a lot of boosts so you can blow the plug out. Oh, bro. My tuner, Rascal, will like roast the crap out of me about not gapping spark plugs and not doing oil changes and all the all the flying by the seat of your pants yeah i do that no testing yeah no like if i show up to yep. texas 2k not a single test pass just qualifying that's test pass well it's very unlikely that i will have any i will probably have started my car up once <laughs> before i go to texas <laughs> at this point oh man I, I really hope you make it just so we can bash chairs on each other's backs at the big end i keep the metal chair right there Oh, Just dude. in case. <laughs> we'll have to do it for the I'll, thumbnail right I'll here. Bring, <laughs> I'll bring the metal chair. That's a good idea. Yeah. And 
you running quarter mile is also kind of comical because <laughs> your car doesn't really run quarter mile. You just don't get off the gas. <laughs> no, I just stay in it. So the I had to sort of qualify for Texas 2K for those of you that don't know. You have to go 849 or faster to run the class that we run. What's that street called? Streetcar. Streetcar class. Street car, then street they car. take uh, the top 96 cars. There's, there's four classes and there's 16 cars in each class. Oh, 16 so cars. So you qualify. 64 cars. And then it's 16, 16, 16, 16. Got you. And so you obviously don't want to be in pack one or two, possibly not three. No, I've I've runnered up in in B group. In B group. Yeah. I'm shooting for C or D probably. With a 760 I run, I've runnered up in B group. Okay. I'm not going to go that fast. I don't believe. It would be a big jump to go 844 and then go 760. That's a big jump. That's a huge jump. I believe in you though. The Thanks. DA will be good. <laughs> you know that? Or you just just no. sounds good. It's never good. It sounds good, yeah. It's, it's Texas never good. In March. I've changed the whole car, though. So we qualify. I go 844. It goes, I don't want to tell them how fast it went to the eighth, but let's just tell them that it only picked up 12 miles an hour in the last 660 feet, right? So we're not giving too much away here. We're just telling them that it only picked up 12 miles an hour in the last eighth of a mile. Mm -hmm. How much do you pick up from your eighth mile mile per hour to your quarter mile per hour? Mile um, per hour? I go 142 in the eighth and 176 out back. So 35 miles an hour. Yeah. Ish. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I picked up 12. But I do have a turbo. Yeah. Yeah. That helps. If I had a turbo, I probably wouldn't have the problem I had. Yeah. But, the turbo helps. Yeah. But my gearing kind of sucks. Like, what, I. What I, rear gear is it? 373? Yeah. It yeah. kind of falls on its face out back. Why? Because it runs out of gear? No, it's just like it's not RPMing much more. It's just kind of like. Bleh. So you're thinking a 390 would be sexier for you, and maybe even more It'd competitive. It's tough on the starting line. Uh, It'd make it a little trickier, I think. What first gear ratio do you have? 180. It's a stock power glide gear. Oh, 182, yeah. 176, something like that. Yeah. Hmm. So it'd be a little spicy, I think, yeah. for some tracks. For some tracks, but definitely not ready. No, definitely not uh, Texas 2K. Not. Not at Motorplex. That's what you're about to see. Mm -hmm. Motorplex is Bradenton in DFW. Like, yeah. XRP is actually Bradenton. But quality of track prep, exact same thing. Mm -hmm. So you should be able to hit it with your same Bradenton radial tune, same thing. The problem at TX2K is the cars there beat up the starting line really badly. The That's GTRs beat up the starting They're line. They're all hopping really and banging bad. and yeah. all that kind of crap. Yeah, like, you'll point. see... After the GTR rounds, there's bald spots. Exactly oh, the yeah. GTR wheel. That kind of scares me. Yeah, it's not fun. And, like, the track prep, because there's so many cars, they don't have the time to really mm -hmm. maintain it quite as well as you would well, hope. Well, it'll be interesting to see how that works out. I changed rear gears getting changed, going for a 410 down to a 390. I would put a 373 in it like yourself, mm -hmm. but I'm worried that I won't be able to eighth mile race with a 373, and I feel like I may get away with it with a 390. So I'm going to go to a 390 rear gear. Uh, Trans just got rebuilt, so that's good to go. Uh, different motor than when I qualified. This is literally okay. a different car, like different yeah. rear end, different, you know, rebuilt Trans. Now it's not slipping. New converter, new motor, fogger instead of a plate now. 15 degree instead of a 23 degree. Dang. Um, it's a whole new car. All out, dude. So we don't know what it's going to be. What has it got? A glide in it? Yeah. 180 glide. Mm -hmm. Same thing you got, you know? Yeah. What kind of 60 foot do you see off of yours? I've been 116. Killing it. Never done anything like that. It it does that pretty consistently. Though. How heavy is that, John? Um, 3,200 me in it. Oh, no shit. Yeah. All steel, I'm all glass, it. dog. I'll steal all glass. I'll steal all glass. I'm 2,900 pounds. I'm in it. Fox body life. Fox body life. I used to be a G-body boy, you know? Ooh, heavy. Had the coolest G-body, though. It had the Euro front end. It had the bull horns coming out the side. Mm -hmm. It shot big old, big old flames. It shot one and a half foot flames. Can't really say two foot, but two foot sounds good. Let's say two foot. It had two foot flames coming out the side and, you know, big forward facing clear Lexan scoop and yep. all that. Yeah, it was... 3,000, 
3,100 pounds, completely gutted. Like saying, yeah. still 3,100 pounds. I mean, pounds. my car's 3,200 pounds with me in it, and it's got no interior. It's gutted. Like, it's yeah. it's got a lot of cage, though. Iron block. Yeah, I feel like, like you're, I feel like you're super block. You're super, you're super motor. You're 2JZ with the turbo and the intercooler and all the fuckery. It's probably as heavy as a small block Chevy. Yeah. They're, they're the same comparable weight. Yeah. Uh, iron block like the cranks are really heavy on those deals they're long and tall motors like mm-hmm. they're people think that they're really light but they're really not like it's still an iron block like it's just and you a run a travel iron. limiter in the front of your car no yeah fully locked super tight there's zero no zero up travel. nothing nothing is it any negative travel like you press on the front yeah, end yeah, and yeah put it can the go down in? a little bit Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's not just like I'm riding on, like, a wagon like, where there's no movement up or down. No, it can go down, but it can't go yeah, up Yeah, no, all. it just can't go up. Yeah, yeah. It has to have some down travel. It does? I mean, yeah, if you, like, come down from a wheelie and it has no uh, travel. Anybody who's seen my car knows that my car has got the potential of not 18 inches, but it does sound good. It's probably 10 to 12 inches of downward travel. Yeah. That's Jeff Thomas Viking long travel struts in the front. And then the other kicker is your ball joints have to be, you know, bent up where they don't bind Mm because your A-arm will fall down and then it'll bind your, your, you know, your strut will bind on the ball joint. So that's a whole other issue. And then the last part is your cast and camera plates. Everybody runs them on top of the strut tower. But if you put them underneath the strut tower, you just compress the shock into the body, you know, the shaft into the body another two inches. So now any shock travel you have downward is just unlimited. It just keeps going and going and going. <laughs> but you don't need that much when you're radial tire racing. You no, need almost you don't need no that front. much on no prep, but it looks cool. You need almost ride. no front travel downward. I have about a quarter inch of downward front travel, and then it bottoms the shock out. It's not ideal. Yeah, like mine are just tight, but like you know, you gotta you gotta have some. They say true street cruise. I'm like, eh, how bumpy are the roads? <laughs> you got basically yeah. a two by four up there. <laughs> Straight up. <laughs> That's yeah. fun, and they're not chains, I'd imagine. Uh, what your travel limiters? Yeah, chains. Oh, they are chains. Yeah, so they have a little bit. Mine are the tube style. Oh, yeah, yeah. So it's a pin. <laughs> yeah. And you can change it like that. I used to have the chains, but they would loosen up. Oh, really? Which was kind of annoying. Like, after, like, a while of driving, they would kind of... I've, I need to replace my chains, honestly. It's time to replace them. They're all bin up. You know how they have the flat little piece that goes in oh, between I the Johnny? Mine and Mine are all bin up, yeah. and I'm in there wiggling in. I can barely fit... I can't fit both hands in there, so I have to put the pin that pins the limiter in and on my finger. Yep. And then I got to sit there and shake the jaw in and try to get the pin. It's funny. The tube style is really nice. I will say the tube style is really nice. About that time, somebody wants to talk to me, you know, so I'm like, Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, yeah. And then I forget to do the other side. And then the next thing you know, I'm like. Yep, yeah. I got my tubes from uh, UPR, but a lot of companies make them, but UPR had a good deal on them. Freaking yeah. Mustang guy, you know. Oh, totally. Big UPR guy, I'm sure, because Mustang, they have everything for Mustangs. I don't think I have a single UPR part. Really? All their, I have their K-member and stuff on my uh, my Mustang, because mm-hmm. I also am a Mustang guy. That's yeah. a 95, dude. Oh, yeah. <laughs> kind of like the most forgettable Mustang ever. Totally. Made. It's like, totally. like people, uh, like, uh, people would look at it and they'd be like, oh, oh it's not a new edge. Oh, <laughs> uh, dude. Every time I find a, a clean S in 95 or a new edge, I show it to Modell. I'm like, hey, what do you think of this? And she's like, every douchebag in high school drove those cars. Why would we want one of those in our driveway? I'm like, because it's a $4,000 Mustang yeah. GT with a five speed and I can. I can act like one of those douchebags in high school right now. Yeah. That's no. That's my goal. I want people to look at me and think that guy was really successful in the 90s, bought a bunch of cars. <laughs> I got my 89 240, I got my 96 Mustang and the 99 Camaro like and the 95 like, Stealth. Don't forget about the Stealth. Oh man. yeah, I need a Stealth. Yeah. And then people will be like, "Man, that guy really peaked in the 90s." <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's the goal. I told the guy with the Stealth on the PUBG, I said, after he told me everything that he had done to himself, I said, "Man, that's that's a really powerful car. You got to respect that car. Right? <laughs> you got to respect that power."
Yeah, you know, not just anybody can handle a stealth. <laughs> With a cold air intake, oh, muffler delete, you better be careful, bud. Potentially got a tune burned into it or something, uh, however they Pretty sure your things. insurance goes up because it's stealth. And, yeah. You know, those are really fast. I don't even know how they tune those things. Probably, like, some stupid-ass way that they had to tune them, knowing, like, a- any tuning that happened in, like, 2005 and older was some <laughs> weird-ass way that people oh, had dude. to... Shout out to all those tuners because they were doing some weird shit. Oh, for real. Yeah, my my Honda Civic I had in high school had, like, the ECU broken open, and then they put a clear piece of plexiglass so you can see that it has a Honda data chip and all that stuff, right? No rev limiter. It, just, it would just float the valves. It would quit revving, you know? It, yeah. It will rev to 10,000. No, it won't. <laughs> it runs out of breath at 9,000. It's like Easy. when you build a PC, you put like a clear thing yes. on it and like a, a light in there. <laughs> yeah, it's got to have a good light in there. Dang, that's a very car show of you to do that. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. I was the Nopi Tuner Vision kid for yeah. sure. Shout out to Nopi. Yeah. I never made it to one of those, but I've always heard some great stories. Man, awesome times, dude. Yeah, the Nopi Tuner Vision and... Oh, uh, what was the other one? I feel, <laughs> I feel like Import Base Off was around back then. <laughs> they've been around so long. I think long. they've been around forever. <laughs> they have, dude. And they have like 50 or 60 events every year, it seems like. What's up with them doing events on Sunday? Explain that. Just on Sunday? In my hometown, they're doing events on Sunday. Why are they doing events on Sunday? You got to get these guys. Get your boys. Don't yeah. you know those guys? I don't know. Oh. I, I can't even keep up when they do these events. I don't see them until two days after they happen. <laughs> I don't hear about these events until two days after it's over. Right, Tuesday. Yeah, two, two that's when I hear after. about it. I'm like, what the heck? How did I not know yeah, that I this was no going idea. on? I don't know if it's my problem or their marketing or... I'm not sure. They do all the right things. They have models there. They have like... <laughs> They have DJs on the starting line. They yeah, have what is a, this, a limbo contest. On, <laughs> they have big plastic trophies. That's a, gotta have big plastic trophies. That's, that's a key. given. Or models, you know, you gotta have a bikini contest or yeah. something. Oh. Women walking around taking photos of pe- on people's cars. Definitely, nothing gets your wife to want to go to a car event more like bikini models. Yeah, they yeah. do that every year at World Cup. Really? Yeah. Oh, okay. That's just the in Ricer the, version. That's the Ricer side of World Cup showing right there for sure. And every year World Cup's like on Halloween in Maryland. It's like 40 degrees out. And they're like <laughs> bikini contest. I'm like, those poor girls. Man, <laughs> I'll have to make it up there. It is a good event, though. I, you know, aside from the bikini contest, which I've actively been against at car events. You know the hardest deal about being a budget racer and i think so many people struggle with this but i'm one of those guys so i can talk on it is when you look at a race and you're like oh okay i want to go race at like ducks race i want to go race at world cup you start looking at the classes you're like okay where do i fit and then you start reading the classes and you're lost three lines in by the third line down they're talking about stock bore space in that i don't even know what that means yeah no idea who's checking this (laughs) <laughs> yeah, and then, like, some of the rules are, you know, we could ask you to pull your cylinder head off, but whoa, 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 it, it took me months to get my cylinder head on. I'm not taking my cylinder head off. Please. Yeah. Even at, like, World Cup, they're like, you got to take your turbo housing off. It's like, what? How? I have to drive to the lanes. I don't have a push vehicle to take my car apart and bring it to the tech. <laughs> yeah. Like, what do you think I'm doing here? I paid someone to put that on. Don't touch it. Yeah. I'm not taking this apart. And like I've seen people have to do it where they have like transmission mount like turbos on like a Mustang. Mm. And I'm like, what do you do? You you bring it up there with no turbo covers and then you have to like I've seen Go people rebuild spend it. like six hours to take their car apart to show the turbos. Yeah, that's terrifying. Uh, I think that's a big issue we have with these like more big name events. Your you know, your Texas two K, your all these big ones. That people will aspire to race at. A yeah. lot of people aspire to race at those. Yeah, John Sears, get your shit together, dude. Yeah, John, you know what? I'm going to call you when I get out of here. We're going to talk about a class that has no rules. Oh, wait, we already have it. It's called Little Gangsters. Mm-hmm. I've been begging John to come on here. You know, he just keeps dodging me. Dude, I would call him right now if we weren't doing this podcast and get him over me, here. Man. I know, he's probably in town still. He's definitely in town and he's still. probably not tired from this weekend at all, teching 10,000 pro mods. So... I didn't decide that I was going to World Series of Promo until Thursday. Bad move, by the way. So I book a plane ticket, 
into Tampa, not Sarasota, to fly directly into Bradenton. No, no, no. Let's fly an hour and a half away. Which, yeah, yeah. What time is it before uh, I lose? 2.45. Okay, we're killing it. So I fly into Tampa, get a rental car, yada, 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 all this stuff. I'm driving down to Bradenton, and Modell's like, you got a hotel, right? I was like, nah. She said, you should probably do that. Like, it's spring break, and there's always stuff going on down there. Ah, no, no, I'll be fine. I'll be fine. I call every single hotel in all of the Bradenton, Sarasota, greater metropolitan area. Yeah, horrible. It was either like $380 a night or the Super 8. See, your boy stayed at the Super 8, and it was disgusting. See, I wish I would have known, and you could have just stayed with me and Bronte. Well, now that we're boys, you know, I can, I'll can i holler at you next time I come into town. You yeah. Know? Well, maybe we're I supposed could stay to... for more days than just like, hey, got to go, got to go. Yeah, we go do some more fishing. I could teach you how to catch a bass. <laughs> mm. Mm. We could go maybe to saltwater. I know it's crazy. <laughs> That's crazy. I know it's crazy. I mean, it doesn't know. It's like I can't fish anyway, so... <laughs> I know it's it's a little nutty, but we were talking a little bit about um, what was it, Limited Street, uh-huh. and it sounds so good on paper, like a two thirty five tire, like or you cars can are going like two seventy five. You can run a two seventy five, yeah. but you got to run the SR, the SS tire, or something yeah, like that. Yeah. But it sounds so good on paper, and then you start reading the rules, and you're like, ah, this seems like a hassle. <laughs> It's kind of where it comes into. Why really. is it three pages of rules, John? Yeah. Why? Because the guys who have max effort combos will just push your shit in. Sorry for my yeah. exact verbiage, but that's exactly what will happen. Yep. You know, if you don't do that, that class will be destroyed and it'll be overran. Yeah, if it was just a, anything on a 235, it would be ruined. Like, they keep it at, like, a 480. That's how they kind of make those classes. They're like, we want it to be, like... This, you know, a four zero or a four ninety or like a yeah. five twenty, and they just kind of like hone the rules in to be there. Yeah, and then if a combo starts to run away, they hone them back in. Yeah, and it's kind of it. It sucks because achievements get penalties. Totally, <laughs> which kind of like is like a kick in the nuts, but also people kind of like pride themselves in that. Oh yeah, I seen John trophies. this weekend at World Series of Pro Mods. What you up to, baby? And, he said, oh, just doing a little Pro Charger check right now. He had these little Pro Charger ring things, you know, mm-hmm. they put on there to make sure they're within reason or whatever. I said, oh, damn, I'm surprised you're not hauling some weight over to Mark right now. He's like, what? I was like, never mind. Never mind. He's like, oh. They try everything to slow him down. Like, they're like, do we take away his lockup? Do we make him not have big turbos? Do we add weight? They just look at his reaction time and go, nope, oh, doesn't matter. <laughs> We're good. <laughs> We're good. But that's the thing. Like, he's been as fast, fast as you want. But he's never, like, ran away with the whole field in eliminations. So right. It's... So you got to let him do that. And we, we talk about that. Me and Poland talk about that in our – in our whole, uh, you know, world of no prep stuff, it's like, how do we slow the class down? I've even gone as far as to call racers. I called Callie Nate last year. I said, how do I get it to where you can't run this class? He said, what? I was like, come on, help me out here, you know? Yeah. I know you don't want to. I know you just want to run over the entire class, but help me slow the class down. He said, oh, we could do this, or you could do that, but I can still change my car to do this. I'm like, yeah, but that would be like bad spirit of you to do that. You know, so you know what I come back to? Like, no 25.5, no funny car hoop. I don't want to call it, oh, it's 25.2, 25.3, whatever. I don't know what it is. So I'm just telling you, no hoop that goes mm-hmm. like this over the driver, okay? If you got that, you're out. Yeah. And then no mini tubs, which, bro, no mini tubs irks the crap out of these guys. Because a lot of them, I mean, they have mini tubs. Yeah, to lower a Fox body that low, Good you need point. mini tubs. Yep. You have mini tubs? No. Mm. Me neither. No and I just tubs. struggle with it. Like, I got a big hammer out, and I beat the crap out of my car until the tire fit, but I can't, I can't lower a, the back of Magic anymore at all. It'll rub everywhere. I can't fit a 15-inch wide wheel on the back. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. It's, it's like... For sure. What it's, size wheel is on the back? 15 by 10? Yeah. Yeah. And it sits like a street car. It doesn't yeah. sit like a freaking Yeah. You're not RVW pro 275 car. to the lanes. Exactly. For sure. When you see a stretched radial, you're like, yeah, that's questionable looking. Looks sick. But there's some rules that they've done for our classes where 10 and a half inch is max. You can have mm. size on a tire, and that's uh, it's easy to figure out. 
Yeah. 275, but you can't have yeah. can't have a 14-inch wide wheel. It's an easy rule. It's easy to tell, too. It's easy right. to visually see if something's wrong, where you don't have to really dig into a car. Because, like, my car you'd see, and you'd be like, he's good. Yeah. One car you could see and be like, ah, that's, that's a measurement. We only have one class that has a bunch of rules. I'm going to look them up so we can see how, fi- how well you fit into this class. But other than... Other than our one True Street class, all our classes are really dumbed down. Like, uh, <laughs> this is how dumbed down. We have a class called Foot Break. It's anything you want as long as you foot break it. Hmm. Planes, trains, automobiles, motorcycles, well, not motorcycles. As long as you foot break the car, go for it. So clutch cars, you're in there. Clutch cars, you're totally in there. Not just small block, automatic car, you're in there, turbo guys. If you can figure out how to get it to go down, go for it. It definitely leans to the nitrous cars a little bit it better. It definitely leans to the nitrous cars a lot better than the uh, than the other guys. You're right. You're right. But regardless, it. Uh, I'll just it's, put my. It's trans, just super dumbed down. I'll just put my know? trans brake button on my brake pedal. Oh yeah. <laughs> just like click. <laughs> just make sure it doesn't ever go on the popper, right? I mean, what? Yeah, exactly. Just like how we're going to be able to tell. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. We don't have to go over all this because look at how long those rules are. Yeah, I mean, you, looks like John Sears wrote that. Yeah, and what the heck? Who did that artwork? Can I help you with that? I like my artwork. You I know? can't read it. What, the artwork? Yeah. Bring the brightness down on, bring the opacity down on the backdrop just a smidge, bud. <laughs> oh, I don't know what opacity know. means. I know, I know. I, but what rule would keep me out? What do you think the, would, I mean, I'm well, not Well, you like got a, a DOT stamp tire. Yeah, all You're tag titled insured ish. I am. Yeah. Factory front glass, factory body panels, subframe connectors allowed, fiberglass, carbon fiber hood allowed. I, it's factory hood. Fender exits allowed. Uh, no tube chassis. You're allowed to have a bolt-in K member. Do you have to have two seats? Uh, must have two front seats. Mm, I'd have to put my passenger seat in. That's a 10-minute f- ordeal. Uh, yeah, or just like put a fold-up chair. Would you stop me? <laughs> yeah, it's... See, that's that's what makes this already long list of rules even longer. Is that then you have to put no fold up must chair. have bolted in front seat, full size, no child seats, you know. When I took Fred for a ride in the car, I didn't have my passenger seat in. So I just ratchet strapped a seat in for and he him. He jumped in on that. He did. We wow. didn't do anything crazy. We oh, just kinda okay. like ripped it a little bit. Yeah. But like, yeah, he, he got in. It was a ratchet strapped seat. With no seatbelts, obviously. Yeah, shout out to Fred. Yeah, Fred, props. Yeah, shout out to you because he was close to a cage and everything's questionable. Yeah, Kyle's like, damn, there goes my insurance, just went up. Yeah, exactly. He didn't know, so it was fine. It was in there pretty tight, I'll be honest. You know, two ratchet straps will get a seat in when you have a cage to ratchet to. Yeah, you fit all these rules. True Street. Do you make them do a cruise? No cruise. Mm. We want to do a cruise, but with Yellow Belly... It's gonna. You saw on Thursday. It's gonna get so gridlocked yeah. getting in that you're not gonna be able to. Build. What about let's like, get thirty cars out? No front mount fuel cell. Doesn't say anything about that. Because that's a good rule to keep out. Yeah, like, I agree. The race cars that definitely slows it down. It just and it this just is keeps also, out a few guys. This is also a no prep water burnout only deal. So that also slows it mm-hmm. way down. You know. Yeah. If like, it was radial prep, that class right there is a three second class every day of the week. Yeah. Did yeah. you see the um? The all steel, all glass car that they were posting about at uh, Ducks Race. It was that white um, F body with the blower sticking out the hood. No, but it had like a fourteen seventy one, <laughs> like it had like a like a pro mod style blower. It's like screw blown, screw blower, all steel, all <laughs> yeah, glass car. I love it. And people are like, "This isn't the class. This isn't oh, what yeah. the class is supposed right. to be." But because it's like all steel, all glass, except. And then they add all these stipulations. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Brandon McGee bought a car called Bad Niner and did the same thing. And so then you see Bad Niner, it's like 900 cubic inch nitrous kits on, you know. It's a no-time car, right? And he put it all still all glass. He put all the factory glass in it, and he put doors with electric windows in it. And so you see it, you're like, uh 
uh, yeah, like, is that all steel and glass? Like, yeah. and then the, people start talking about that. Like, it's not the spirit of the class. It's not, but just but like, putting <sighs> must be spirit of the class on there is like gay. Yeah, That's I'm horrible. like, what is like? You can't do that. What are we all holding hands in a circle around yeah. a car and like deciding what's in the spirit of the class? <laughs> like, like how do you, how do you? <laughs> Oh. Who's teching based on the vibe? You know what I mean? Like, imagine, like, John Sears is like, it's not the vibe, man. <laughs> he comes over, he's got dreads on. It's, it's like, really just not the vibe. The vibe is all wrong. He's got a Rasta accent at that point, right? He got, like, a guitar nah. on. Yeah, a little ukulele at action. The, at the tech. That, that's always tough. I hate when people do that. They're like, it's not the, it's not the spirit of the class. I'm like, yeah. I'll oh. never put that on any races that we do. I hate spirit of the class stuff. That, yeah, spirit of the class just it. means that you don't know how to slow that class down. You're not trying hard enough yeah. as a promoter, as a as a rule guy. You know, it's tough to slow down the streetcar class too. We're in the same boat because you got Brett Lasalo that is streetcar and he goes six thirties, like clockwork. That's the Lasalo reference for anybody keeping track at home. There's one every podcast, but. You know, go six thirties every pass like clockwork yep. on a stock block, small block. What are you supposed to tell that guy? With T four turbos. Ugh. So like, how do you? Because those are all ways that you could rule them out. Like no billet blocks, no big blocks. <laughs> He's got everything. No T six turbos. <laughs> no green Mustangs owned by a guy named Brett that lives in Florida. Yeah, yeah. Fixed it. Got it done, yep. dude. And it's got like a rear mount fuel cell. <laughs> It's air to air intercooler. I seen it at Sick Week when I was all bandaged up. He didn't really want to talk to me because I looked terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> Your wife's walking you around like you're uh, <laughs> like it's a make a wish. <laughs> oh, that was it. Dude. For that his make a wish, he wanted to go to Sick Week. <laughs> Oh, why is Make a Wish so funny, bro? That's horrible. You're a horrible person. It's only for that. funny because you would be the guy, you know, because you're fine. But you know, it's only funny for that reason. It wouldn't be yeah. funny if somebody was actually doing a Make a Wish. Yeah. And Garrett's actually done a few of those I've seen where people their Make a Wish is to go do oh, laps in the Freedom long. Factory. That's were, great. If you're ever on Make a Wish and you want to hang out with Jimmy Dale, I will drag the back bumper with my car with you in it. Yeah. Guaranteed. 100%. Don't even go through the Make a Wish Foundation. Just hit me up. I'll I'll do what you need. I don't know. Oh, you're going to have a blown up inbox. No. Blown up. Yep. Everybody. <laughs> they already tuned out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they quit watching 30 minutes ago. <laughs> yeah, dude, they're done. <laughs> they were done right after we made fun of Flo. <laughs> 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 oh, these guys are just going to talk about rules all day? I'm out. Yeah, they put their freaking white sunglasses on. <laughs> you know, Oakley's. the no prep. <laughs> the no prep king sunglasses. Oh, yeah. They got the gas cans on and their cargo shorts, and they smacked their wife on the way out of the house. Yeah, I grabbed a freaking fresh monster. <laughs> Got in their New Edge black Mustang. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Don't talk about the New Edges, though. <laughs> They're stealth. <laughs> Five speed, no exhaust on it, straight straight piped. Yeah, the guy that I bought mine from, it was his dad's, and he was like, oh, man, like, you know, it was, my dad worked at a dealership. He was a mechanic. Like, it's <laughs> super well-maintained. It was a V6. <laughs> and he was, like, hyping it up. Like, it was this, like... It's immaculate nice VA car. I'm like, dude, I just want a roller race car. Like, I would prefer if it was a roller. Yeah. Honestly. Can you take the motor out and yeah. throw it in the ocean? Exactly. I was like, it's more inconvenient for me that it's just running, driving. For sure. And under it, I found four hidden keys. Magnet <laughs> deals. I was like, I think your dad was pretty forgetful guy. Yeah, he was. <laughs> I'm being honest. That's dude. awesome. Where I'm from outside, of, I live outside a town called Wichita Falls. And there was a Facebook group that popped up that, like, gained a lot of traction. <laughs> it was titled, Throw Your Old Car Batteries in Lake Wichita. <laughs> and it was like a, it had an event day on it. Okay, so April, you know, or, you know, March 3rd, everybody meet up for the Throw Your Old Batteries in Lake Wichita. And it's, uh, everybody starts liking it and sharing it, liking it and sharing it. And, and so the guy who... You know, obviously is running this fake, you know, not fake, but whatever, the Facebook page. He's like every day he'll post, 
a bunch of car batteries. They'd be like, we're getting them all loaded up for, for next come. weekends. Throw them out. Well, that's a safe and legal thrill. <laughs> I don't know if it's legal, but it is hilarious. Well, in Google for a long time, it said it was legal to do. So that's where that joke came from. If you Googled, like, I didn't you know. know, can you throw your used car batteries in the ocean? It would say, yes, it's a safe and legal thrill. <laughs> <laughs> That's how Google would display it. So somebody makes this thing. So forever, it's a safe and legal thrill. Oh, dude. And you're feeding the electric eels. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody's on there. This is a horrible idea. I can't believe you did this. You know, all the all the boomers are on there just booming. <laughs> yeah. They're having hell Fuming. with it. Oh, man. So the joke was going to be, we're going to need, we need to start our own Facebook page about come watch Jimmy Dale jump Lake Wichita in the rally car. <laughs> and then I got the Camry rally car out there. I'm going to jump the whole lake. <laughs> it's probably a pretty large lake now. <laughs> I mean, it's about as, as small as that lake pond thing you took me to earlier. <laughs> yeah, you wanted to go fishing, so I took you to a massive lake. I <laughs> yeah. thought that's what you were talking about. We might as well have gone and stood on the beach. I didn't think you wanted to go to a puddle. <laughs> yeah, like a manageable pond, you know, under one acre. It's I'll like just get a cast net. <laughs> just... <laughs> this guy takes me to a fifty thousand acre pond. I said, I said, Cooper, this pond would be great if we could just drain half a million gallons of water out of it. It'd beautiful. be awesome. <laughs> it was a beautiful walk in nature. Oh, it was. Yeah, we, we got... caught two fish. <laughs> you caught two fish. I just sat there and looked like an idiot. Well, the one didn't actually touch the grass, so I don't know. Is that? I'm gonna give it to you. You got it out of the water. That's true. And then I got all tangled up and flustered. So I launched her back <laughs> this, in. This, <laughs> this man buys the deep, the deep sea pole to go pond fishing, and then does better with it than the actual pond fishing pole. <laughs> well, you're using a hook that was like, like a five inch like shark hook. It was a four aught worm hook for the people who fish. <laughs> it was a pretty large hook for where we were going fishing. And a number like, four. No, nah, I'm thinking, bro, we're in Florida. There's nice-sized bass down here. Like, I'm going to get me one. Nope. Cooper took me to the biggest pond I've ever seen. I thought you had, like, a drone or something, and we were going to be able to scope out. Oh, uh, yeah. I look a like a bit. real drony type of guy, right? <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't even own a GoPro. What are you talking about? You don't have a GoPro either or a draggy? You don't have a drone to go fishing with? You know, you can go scope out all the spots and well, check it out. I told you my idea, though. I'm going to just cast out there with a bobber, and then once the bobber goes down, I'm going to transbreak launch my car. Hmm. In the cartoon version of this, the fish is in the water. The bobber goes down, and Magic is on a prepped race surface and does a wheelie. Yeah. Right? Ah, the fish comes flying out, but then I stop the wheelie before we like drag the fish to death. You know, that's not as exciting there. So. There's got to be a uh, drag strip also that has a pond close enough. Behind the burnout box? Maybe close enough. It doesn't have to be directly behind. It could be kind of adjacent. It could be. Yeah. You know? <laughs> you could pull it on an angle. Yeah. Anybody out there with a drag strip that has a pond near the starting line-ish yeah. or a prepped area of the racetrack... Holler at me. Well, or, people go fishing in, um, what do they call it, Lake Daytona or something, or Lake Earnhardt or whatever. I don't know. The one in the Daytona 500 circle. Yeah, I don't watch anything I don't, like that. I don't know what the name of that pond is, but, like, imagine fishing in that. That's probably the most polluted mm. pond in the country. Yeah. All the runoff is from Daytona. <laughs> yeah. Daytona International <laughs> Speedway runs off into this one pond. Whole bunch of batteries in there. Just fishing it all day. <laughs> Batteries, lawn chairs, fuel, tire, rubber, beer cans for sure. I mean, you probably cut open a fish and it's just rubber from a tire. Yeah. <laughs> like the whole base is probably just tire rubber. I like to think that all the fish have number threes on the side of them. Yeah, what's yeah. the name of that pond? It's something. It's something funny. Somebody knows it. I gotta. I gotta check now. Some somebody knows. And they're probably screaming at their phone right now, like you. Idiot. It's like Arnor. I think it is for some reason. Oh, no, it's Lake Lloyd. Lake Lloyd. It's a pretty common one, though. It's big. It's a large lake. Let me see that, Johnny. Lake Lloyd. Oh, it's in the racetrack. Yeah, no, it's like you drive around it, so Ooh. everything that runs off from the racetrack is yeah. in that pond. Imagine eating a bass out of that thing. No, can't, can't wrap my head around that. <laughs> that does not sound fun.
Uh, we were at a, a friend's birthday party, and, <clears throat> you know, the uncle's a big Jimmy Daler. So he's like, Jimmy, we got to go fishing. And he shows me this pond. I'm like, man, that's awesome, dude. I, I'd love to go fish that pond with you. He's showing me all the fish he caught. And I said, well, I'm down to go. You know, we can go this day or that day. And then he starts to bring up about how, like, it's not really his pond and that he doesn't really own the property. And he only goes there during the week because he doesn't know who owns the property. And it's like really quick this went from, like, I can't wait to go fish it to let's go poaching. Yeah. They go to work at 9 a.m. and they're back by about 4.30, so we got to be careful. <laughs> if we can get in there about 10, you know, we could really put it on them. And it's not like he's just catching and releasing. No, this dude's going to cat fish their pond, then coming home with a string or a bass. Well, like growing up, like poaching fish was always like a normal thing because, yeah. you know, I grew up around the ocean and commercial fishermen would always be trying to like sneak the number of fish that they could catch because yeah. it would be tough. Like they'd be like, well, you're a commercial fisherman and you can catch 12 striped bass this season. And they're like, well, I can't make any money off of 12 striped bass. Yeah. Like the, the regulations would be insane. And you're like, right. well, I can't like, how does that work? Yeah. So they would always kind of be poaching fish. It's like weed, and they're all like, okay, look, you can grow five plants, he can grow five plants, I'm going to get ten people, I'm going to grow 50 plants. We're yeah. growing five for five years, bro. There was always stories, too, like, you know, they'd, they'd have draggers where it just, like, drags the whole ocean. And I've, I've always heard stories of people pulling up just, like, tons of drugs. Like, oh, for sure. You just, like, reel in your, your, uh, your whole catch, and it's just, like, bricks of anything you can think <laughs> yeah. of and it's weird because it's like no, up north it's not like super drug central quite as yeah. much as like if you were in like the caribbean or something right florida yeah because there's a lot of that you ever see those submarines that come through oh yeah <laughs> where it's like a freaking that's some missile? real shit right there yeah. that is some real stuff they're really doing that yeah like it's like an actual homemade submarine yeah that somebody's using to bring drugs so y'all got submarines over here we got tunnels in texas and like they launch it too, like trebuchets, right? <laughs> News to me. I've I've heard of that too, where it's like that's a real accurate way to. He's like, boom. <laughs> it's, like, it's like the Discovery Channel pumpkin chugging. <laughs> yeah, that's what they do with those. After they do the pumpkin chugging TV show, they sell them to the cartel, and then the cartel's got the thing, and it's over there like this. <laughs> like, like, that's just like it's coming in like a walkie-talkie, and you're just watching. It. Watching like a like a fifty fifty pound like thing of weed just huck oh, over yeah. a fence. Yeah, Cooper, because that's what they're trying to smuggle across the borders of weed now. Chill out, buddy. It ain't eighty five no more. I don't know. A, a family just <laughs> goes through the air. Yeah, like what we were talking about earlier. It's like I a family of Chinese people. <laughs> People just don't, people old. don't realize that it's not just Mexicans crossing the border. It's people from all over the world. If you want to get in the United States and you don't have a clear way of getting in there, you just need to go to Mexico. <laughs> yeah. you, know, you can get in from Mexico. My buddies were telling me how tough it is to get in through Canada. And I'm uh, like, I that's hilarious. <laughs> that's so <Yeah>. difficult. <laughs> It's such a huge border. How could it be that hard to I get know. in? I know. I'm like, come on, Rich. Just freaking... Bomb right through. Oh, he, Rich Guido. <laughs> yeah, he was telling me love about how Rich. tough it was. I love Rich. And he's like, you got to go to the right spots and stuff. And then uh, Bruce was also telling me because he tried to, he got a a truck there and he was drove it through and it was like a whole thing and they like didn't let him and he had to go to like different borders to try. Oh my gosh. Hell and I'm man. like, why do they care so much? Rich, they're probably just like, yep, gone. You yeah, would think, right? Like, I wouldn't want to stop him. No. Well, you want to be the guy that tells him no? No, I mean, he's, yeah, because once you meet him and you see how nice he is. Yeah. I'm like, man, that guy is awesome. After I got burned and was dumb enough to be like, I'm still doing sick week because obviously I was still high on pay meds. But <laughs> I'm like, I'm they still doing sick good? week. You get some like uh, oxycodone or something. I don't know. They gave me some <laughs> crazy shit. They gave me so much stuff that they gave me Narcan to go with it. And nice. it's like, golly. Just in case. Just in case. So the number one goal was to, you know, not take any of the pain pills. Yeah. Like, because you always hear about people getting hooked on that stuff. So. Well, when my wife was in labor, they're like, all right, we're going to give her some fentanyl to 
make her feel better. I'm like, oh. that hits the ear hard. Yeah, they did like, the same saying thing. That, I'm like, that's a weird sound to hear. Oh, yeah. I was in the, so they did the same thing with me. I was Can in the ambulance, ambulance, and I'm in the ambulance, and I'm, like, shaking because I'm in shock after getting my whole body burned or my whole upper body. And sitting there shaking, shaking, and it's starting to wear off, and I'm starting to, like, not cry, but just, like, uh, uh, like I'm just making noises because I'm hurting so bad. Mm -hmm. And he's like, this dude's about to pass out. And when he passes out, then it's going to be way worse. Like, then we have to, you know, he said, we may have to put a tube down your throat and, like, all this evasive stuff, like, if you just mm -hmm. nod off, you know, like, pass out. And he said, the best thing we should do right now is to give you this fentanyl. And I was like, hell, just yeah. like you were like, I, like nope. hits the ear hard. I'm like, holy yeah. shit. Yeah, it does. So to talk a little bit more about when you burned yourself, to give the full context, you came to Sick Week with a car. Yeah. That car failed. You bought yeah. a different car. Yeah. And that car also failed. No. 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 What happened? I came down here in a car we call Frosty, which is one of the cleanest uh, Monte Carlo SSs in the country. It's beautiful. And came down here in Frosty, you know, Brought it down, was super excited about it. Get here. We're here Wednesday or Thursday, I think. I'm one of these. Thanks, bud. We're here Wednesday or Thursday and unload it off the trailer, go hit the car wash, straight to dinner. Get to dinner, it blows the lower radiator hose off. I'm like, well, I didn't build this car. I bought this car, so I don't know how well the lower radiator hose was put on. Blows it off, whatever. I tell the old lady, hey, let's go to dinner. There ain't nothing we can do about this car right now. We go eat, come back out. I put water in this thing and drive it, no bullshit, two miles down the street. There's no way this water that was, like, cold could be boiling lava hot right now. Well, turns out there was steam in the engine, and I just poured a bunch of water in the radiator. And when I let go of that radiator cap, it blew all that hot steam all over my body, you know, all over my upper body. Yeah. Which, I mean, at this point, just gave me, like, a nice facial, you know, it really burned the crow's feet off the side of my head. And, oh, yeah, yeah. It'll be know. the new thing. It's the new thing. Like, my skin's still a little pink, but I would say I've made a full recovery. Yeah, I mean, I was surprised when I saw you. Yeah, like we talked earlier. How full it's, of a recovery it's made. It's like, how much can you stay gooped up, you know? How mm -hmm. long can you keep putting that cream on yourself? The more you can do it, the better you're so going to be. So for people that, I guess, were wondering how like what level of burn are we talking here? Like second what, degree, and like how much of? Because they talk about percentages, right? Yeah, forty five percent of my 45%, body. Forty five percent, yeah. Because they talk with burns, like how much percent of your right. body was burned, which is an interesting way to that they do that with injuries. Oh yeah, for sure. It's weird. It you know what's weird is being completely like coherent in there, and a uh, young nurse that's learning how to you know be a nurse comes at you with some scissors and starts cutting your clothes off, and you're like, whoa, hey, hey, chill, yeah. chill. You know, I like, like this shirt. Huh? <laughs> I didn't have a shirt on yeah. the time. She was going for my underwear. Mm. But I was like, I, I, I got yeah. this. And they're like, well, you need to take those off. We need you, you know, completely naked. And I was like, uh, can I get a towel or something, you know? And they gave me a towel, and I pulled my own pants off instead of them just – Cutting all my stuff off. It's like it's like real aggressive. Yeah. You know? I mean, they don't care. They'll just right off. I yeah. mean, I know um my buddy was telling me because he got his nipples pierced as a dare. Oh. And if you have nipple piercings and they have to resuscitate you, they rip them out. Because you can't have the metal when they go to resuscitate. Did he get you. resuscitated? He didn't, but that was always his fear. Was oh. like, if you have to get re resuscitated with nipple piercings, guess what? Oh. They don't take them out gently. Jeez, we need they to need switch to, the subject. They but. need to come out like that. And that was a fun dare in college to make him get his nipple pierced. Oh, he was horrible. too eager. And his name was Garrett. Yeah. <laughs> he, you know, he was too eager, though, to, he wanted to lose that dare. Oh, we were yeah. all kind of like... Why are you so like you picked out the oh, well. Yeah, he picked out the place and everything like oh darn, come on guys like <laughs> you know like that night no one's pushing him. <laughs> we would have all forgotten. Oh yeah, I have to do this. <laughs> no, I'm a man of my word. <laughs> like, 
<laughs> we're like, dude, you're like, we don't care that much. No, uh, no, no. And then our other buddy was like, I'll do it with you in solidarity. I'm like, I think you guys. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> and then they held I've hands. That's like got the it. most painful thing to possibly get pierced is your nipples. Like, they were eager. <laughs> <laughs> it's a fun dare. Though. What year was this? Ninety five. Come on, <laughs> it was not that long ago. You know, it was. Freaking, oh my gosh! What twenty fourteen? I mean, awesome. it was definitely questionable, though. That is very questionable. Even like ear but, piercings, you know, currently are thankfully out for the most part. Yeah, that's true. People are pretty done with uh, that stuff. Me, me, and Modell. Anytime we go somewhere memorable, you know, we. We like to get tattoos. We got tattoos all over the place. So, you know, what's what's the one more, right? And so we got these cowboy boots tattooed on our arms when we were in Vegas. Mm-hmm. The problem is that we've already been drinking and partying, right? And then you're like, let's get tattoos. And you just walk in the first place you get to. And you're thinking that you're going to be the drunkest one in there. It turns out the guy doing my tattoo was even more messed up than I was. Nice. He's like, yeah, I'm done after this for the night. I'm going to head over to this strip club or that strip club. Yeah. I was like, oh. And if you look at that tattoo, it is not <laughs> my best work. Hopefully hers is nicer. <laughs> you know what? I think he did better on hers, but I also burned half mine off. So. Oh, that doesn't help. Yeah. yeah. Back to the burn deal. So yeah. the, the frosty car, you know, overheats. I go to the hospital, get out, and I'm thinking in my head, okay, Frosty's got a blown head gasket. It's done for the week. Mm-hmm. But I'm thinking, hey, since they let me out the same day that I got burned, that I'll be able to do sick week. It's going to suck. I'll be hurting. But, like, I can pull it off. You know, I can do this. So my buddy Tyler Sims is like, hey, I got an S10. You know, he cut me a deal on this S10. So – uh, a Jimmy Daler brings the S10 down from like Alabama down here. I get the S10, like badass. That's when Rich uh, comes over. I had met Rich at PRI, and he's like, Well, let's just make sure that it's good to go on sick week, you know, because you're hurt. So we need this S10 to be like mint. It needs really to be dialed, that. you know. So him and all the Canadians just dive in on the S10. Mm-hmm. And I'm sitting there like, I mean, you saw the photos. <laughs> yeah, it was bad. It was it was rough. You sent me one pretty soon after it happened. I feel like, and yeah, I was like oof, because I was supposed to. We were trying to do the podcast. This has been like a six month ordeal. Well, I was like, I was like, no way, he's going on sick week. Like, there's not possible. And then you told me, and I was like, still, I was like, there's no way he should be going on sick week. Yeah. It's not possible. <laughs> well, everybody felt the same way, and uh, I was surprised. Mo was cool with it, not just like, not cool with it at all. You, not even a little bit. But I was so hard headed that it was just easier to like, ah, okay, whatever. Yeah, it'll be your loss. <laughs> totally. Yeah, and then so you get that down here. It had its own problems, as yep. a car does. Yep, it, it was not sick week ready. I'd imagine nope. most project cars are not sick week ready. Yep, it had like the. Auto's own little bitty fan on the radiator, like that ain't gonna work. Yeah, so in Florida. Fortunately for us, they had like the Summit van, you know, or truck at the Sick Week deal. And so that day that I show up to Sick Week for tech, I'm all bandaged up. I'm like a puffer fish, bro. I'm all huge. People don't even want to look my direction because it's like hard to look at, you know. But then the second I pass them, I can tell they're like, what? You know, I could tell people were talking about it, but they didn't want to do it to mm-hmm. my face, understandably. And uh, I would have done it to your face. Just oh, you know. for sure. Yeah. Respectfully. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Or not respectfully, but just at least openly. Yeah, openly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. That's exactly. cool. Yeah. yeah. So, anyhow. Yeah, that car. that. Where's the S10 now? At my house. You brought it back to Texas? Yeah, I brought, brought it back to Texas. You brought both of them back? Uh, the Monte Carlo is in Ohio. It's okay. in Ohio with old man and Billy and them taking up room in their shop. They're like, hey, we got three lifts next to each other so we can hold six cars right here. It's like, yeah, but you guys have 18 cars. So <laughs> How does that work? It is kind of the double-edged sword of a lot of cars in a climate where you want to keep them all inside. Very difficult. Yeah, and especially if one or two don't run, suddenly you're pushing shit around. Mm-hmm. It gets not fun really quick. Yeah. 
which you, is, you and me are, have it so made of like not worrying about rust or you guys worry about rust no yeah we don't worry about rust at all no it's not a problem down here i've always been so any northeast by car that. is going to be rusty who any northeast car oh for sure northern car rust yeah like ohio and, new york yeah rough growing up we you go to look at a car, that's the last thing on your head is that, mm-hmm. oh, it's going to be rusted out, this, that, or the other. We had, uh, Morgan had a Mustang, and it came from, like, Tennessee. But when you say Tennessee and you squint your eyes, that almost means Chicago in a way. Like, that's mm. pretty, Tennessee's pushing it. Yeah. You're yeah, pushing it's up it. up there. Yeah. They, they're, like, trying to tell me that it came from the Northeast without fully committing to saying it came from yeah. the Northeast. And, bro, it was so rusted that it had, like, grounding issues. And, like, I just – I chased my tail over and over and over with that car, and eventually we got rid of it. Thank goodness. But Working on other people's basket case cars gets frustrating. Yeah. It can be fun sometimes, but unraveling another person's shit show. It had the ECU in the fucking fender. It was in the fender. No, no, no. It was, like, at, in the, the ECU for LS – was in the front bumper, and the wiring harness went through into the fender. I don't mm-hmm. know what made the original owner think that this is, like, the best place to put this. Yeah. I have no idea. No clue. It was obviously one of those deals, like, this is my first LS swap build in my whole life, and they just overthink every single thing. Yeah. And then I was talking to NX Gonzo the other night, and I was like, well, I know it's not your first LS swap because the valve covers aren't spray-painted gold. Oh. And he's like, oh, yeah, I remember those days. That is, seems like a lot of people's first move. Why Why is it gold? I always wanted every, I always thought Good black, question. but people go for gold valve covers on LSs, especially like they don't even clean them up. They don't even get the oxidation off of them. You know, you don't even like rough it up a little bit no. with like some Scotch Brite. It's just like right to the gold AutoZone spray paint. Yeah. <laughs> like right to it. Get the valley cover. Right? You got to spray paint that valley. No, you got to get the ICT billet valley cover. Yeah. For sure. That nobody will ever see. Mm-hmm. Got to spray paint the valve covers gold. Timing cover gold. Valley covers always, I always question that too. I'm like, well, what does that do that the stock one doesn't? You know? Like uh, valve covers, I somewhat understand. But even so, like most LSs are fine with stock valve covers. Unless you got something real fancy under there. It seems fine. I don't know. I mean, I like I like OEM shit. It works pretty well. I agree. Like I blew it, so many LSs up on my turbo car that I just quit cleaning the motors. Yeah. Put it in there. Well, some valley covers suck, too. You tighten them too much, and they crack because uh, they don't yeah. have, like, the stangents like a stock uh-huh. one should have. And that's yeah. where OEM, sometimes it's just a little but, better than aftermarket. I mean, if, if you're really getting after your valley cover bolts, like, what are you doing, bud? Sometimes you just over-tighten them, and they're pulling the bolt in. And sometimes I tie, I don't have a gentle touch. I'm not a gentle person. My wife gets mad at me all the time. She's like, everything you do, you're like, I hold the kid, like I hold my child and I'm just like too rough. She's like, you're too rough (laughs) all the time. Oh yeah. So it adds up, you know, you saw me attempting to fish today. (laughs) It's similar. Uh. It's, It's just how it rolls. I don't know. So, what is the real MVP if if your love making is like your fishing? (laughs) She's a great sport. (laughs) She's a team player. She's a great sport. (laughs) Big team player. (laughs) Yeah. So, do you plan? Like, are are you thinking on your videos like what the future of your channel is at all, or do you just kind of are you just rolling with it day by day? I wonder what the future of Jimmy Dale Racing is. <laughs> you don't plan for you wonder. <laughs> I wonder. Yeah. Like, so no. everybody watching has just as good of an idea as you. Oh, for sure. Maybe no more. Clue. Oh, we're gonna do a video. We're not gonna do a video. Then, like my last video, I. Put it up, get demonetized for NBC using the office, and then I'm like, okay, I'll take it down. I modify it some, some, but I don't take all the office out, and I re-upload it, and then it tells me, oh, it passed your, it passed the check. You know, you're like, oh, okay, cool, it passed the check. So you, you yeah. click the monetization, and then ten minutes before it goes live, I premiere all my videos. So what I'm thinking is on the premiere deal, 
I want to say thank you to everybody who's ever watched a Jimmy Dale video. And if you're lucky or whatever, if you happen to be watching the video when it premieres, then we can shoot the shit and watch it together. And I can comment back to you and you can comment to me. And it's kind of yeah. like we're all watching it together. Yeah, it makes it know? like a live feed. It is like a live feed, kind of. Yep. You know, like I'm premiering the video. We're talking together. You know, we're keeping up with whatever's going on. And it's awesome. I get a bunch of the same guys watching the video on the premieres. A lot of people don't miss it. And it's really cool. So, But, no, I don't think about where the channel's going to go. I admire you so much because you really found your niche and you're killing it. But <clears throat> I don't, I don't know. And then the days of blowing up on YouTube, I'm sure they're still there, but I haven't seen it in a while. What was the last one you seen blow up? Yeah, I haven't seen anybody really just like explode. Yeah. There's a lot of people that have been grinding and then suddenly take off. Yeah. But like, it's I, not. I just probably like, put the least amount of effort into the results that I got out of most of the people that I can think of off the top of my head. Hmm. That's interesting to say about brag. yourself. I feel like you probably have put in more than you're giving yourself credit for. I would say. Oh. Yeah. Maybe. It it sucks to I. Every video kind of has a different theme to it a little bit. You may have noticed that watching some of my mm -hmm. stuff. And some may be like a super American just go-getter video, and some may be like a Grand Theft Auto themed, you know, like the mm -hmm. Yellow Belly, the last Yellow Belly video. And just kind of making fun of myself. Well, the whole you time. always have a lot of references and a lot of like pop culture stuff, I feel like. Yeah, for sure. But it takes a special type of person to one, be able to have so many pop culture references and also a special type of viewer to even get them all. So but that's an interesting one. I usually do, but I'm yeah. also like you where I feel like we've seen a lot of movies, a lot of TV shows, a lot of this stuff. Definitely. But like I know a lot of people that, you know, wouldn't get any office references, wouldn't right. get any old movie references. Yeah. I think me and you have that in common, but there's a lot of people that haven't even that wouldn't get most of this pop culture stuff. You're right. And totally. pop culture's dying anyways. Like it's it's gone. Yeah. But nobody's seen just, the same stuff. Every video can't be, hey guys, I'm Jimmy Dale. I'm racing here. This is the class that we're racing. Yep. You already know the race car. This is what I'm doing to my tune. This is first round, second round, oh you lost. Or first round, second round, oh, you won the whole thing. Not every video can be like that, and those videos typically are not very exciting. Yeah, because you know what they what my boys always tell me is if you're Jimmy Dalen, you're gonna have a great video. People are gonna have fun at the race. I'm hooting. I'm hollering. I'm being over bigger than life, right? But if I'm focused, I may win the whole event. Which one you want? You want to win the whole event, stay focused, like these pro mod guys are focused on winning, or do you want to be the, the class clown it's very difficult to be both right i would consider myself the class clown of drag racing which yeah. we needed because everybody takes this stuff so serious there's a lot of that yeah so i try to just be funny and make people laugh and i have fun doing that and making jokes and it works and especially if you can keep yourself entertained is probably the whole part of it i think that's where i'm struggling recently is with the whole, hey, guys, we're at this race. This is the race we're doing. Yep. That structure of a video is getting boring to me. And so since I'm getting bored with it, my passion's not really, you know, following through with it. And I really like traveling and meeting people. <clears throat> this is some of the funnest stuff is like the podcast stuff. But if you don't go out and do things, you're not going to have anything to talk about. Yeah, I know. know. That's the you kind of need to go and travel and go yeah. to races. To, I should have gone to that this. ice drags this year. I should have sucked it up, should have dr drilled some s screws in my tires and shown up out there and just not – I wasn't going to win the damn thing. Yep. I was never going to win the whole thing. It would just have been about being goofy and going ice drag mm -hmm. racing. I should have done it. And it's tough, too, because, like, you don't have a channel where you film, like, other people all the time. Like, you look at, like, Street Race Channel. They film like a whole race. Like you can watch their channel and watch the whole the race. whole race almost, yeah. which takes a huge amount of dedication. I I would not. Oh, forget. Dude. I'm not standing up on the starting line filming every car. No like way. That. Yeah, and their whole team is so like well dialed and being able to pull off a video like that and structure and whatnot. And mine is 
not yeah. that, you know. You'll often see me in a race where something crazy will happen and I didn't have my phone out. And this is probably one of my stronger suits is that I can run up to any total stranger on the planet that just had their phone out and introduce myself and convince them to send me that video in about 30 seconds or less. Yep. Hey, how you doing? I'm so-and-so. I YouTube for a living. And my dumb ass didn't have my phone out. See, I'm like throwing a little bit of humility in there. I'm like, hey, I'm mm -hmm. an idiot. But I seen that you just got that awesome video. Can I get it from you? And I'll be able to use it in my YouTube video. And 99% of the time, they're like, yeah, bro. I talked Airdropped. to I talked to Nick with the um, hustling horsepower about this, uh -huh. and I was he was like worrying about like he doesn't get footage all the time of his car and stuff. I'm like, dude, if you just post on Facebook, like, hey, can you come airdrop videos? Yeah, that you took of my car or help me out. Like, you know this, fans and viewers would be stoked at the opportunity oh, to help sure. you out and get yeah. some footage for you. Bro, if you come by the Jimmy Dale pit before first round and I don't ask you if you have an iPhone, something's wrong. Yeah. Because I will ask every single one, hey, what kind of phone you got? What kind of phone you yeah, got? Yeah, you just come airdrop like, it. Oh, I got an iPhone. Hey, bro, video as much as you can, and then I'll get it from you later. Mm -hmm. And then I think the guys who do that, they enjoy seeing their footage. I mean, I'm not like, hey, Bill from Kentucky, film this. But... I think that they enjoy seeing their stuff. I'm sure they enjoy helping the channel. And like, most of them are filming anyways, and they're just like, oh, well, it's going somewhere at least. Yeah. Like, what normal, are they going to do with it? They're going to leave it in their phone for six months, and then they're going to need space and be like, oh, that was a boring video. It's like but. filming fireworks. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you want to do something with it. <laughs> Anybody who's out here filming fireworks, <laughs> you know the type of person that's oh, doing that. <laughs> oh, look, dude. We were, uh, we were on vacation earlier this year, and there was fireworks, and there's, like, this great clip where little Billy Dale's in the pool, and he's flying flopping around and mom's just sitting there looking gorgeous and I kind of pan from mom to Billy and then the fireworks <laughs> and then I'm editing the video I'm like and fireworks <laughs> nobody cares right and so I'm trying to make fireworks exciting yeah so you know how I did it it pans from Modell down to Billy in the pool and everything's like playing forward and then it gets to the fireworks, and I reverse the fireworks. And so the fireworks are like, blue, blue, blue. It looked a lot more entertaining. Yeah, yeah, a lot cooler. My For most recent fireworks filming was f filming my friend filming them, and I was making fun of him <laughs> as he was filming them. That's solid. <laughs> it was more fun for me. Yeah, yeah, that's you your know? best bet, really. Yeah, you just you got to make fun of the people filming the fireworks. It's right. definitely the best move. <laughs> what are you going to do with that, bud? Yeah, just delete it now. I was like, just delete <laughs> that dude <laughs> I was like, just pull it up delete it. Uh, next time just hold your phone up and don't hit record okay? he was zooming in <laughs> like, i was like what are you zooming in on we're 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 a thousand feet away from them like, uh you have any uh advice for the youtube channel or for myself in youtubing stuff i d frick i mean you're already killing it i <laughs> I, I don't know. I can't keep burning myself. Look, I'm all out of content. I'm bud. all burnt out. I'm tapped out. I'm burned out over here, bud. I feel uh, like people really relate to the kind of stuff that you do and the content you do. So it's just kind of like you you just keep growing in the same thing. If you have a recipe that works, you just keep doing it a thousand times. Yeah. And that's kind of where a lot of people fault is something's working but they're like, I'm going to do something else. Yeah, that's a good point. Thanks. Like just stay on the, so stay just on keep, the track. Keep running. Yeah, because, yeah. I mean, you haven't even been doing it that long. No, literally one year. Yeah, so, like, to do anything for one year is almost like a nothing blip. Yeah. Like, to right. really know results is, like, five years. Yeah, that's a good point. That's kind of the thought of it. Like, you know, this podcast has been going for, like, a little over a year. Five years is when, like, things are really, like, okay, you've been doing it a while. Yeah, for sure. That's my thought. And if, if something's working, you just keep beating that same drum. I don't know. My main channel I haven't done much with, Cooper Bogetti channel. I haven't done all that. I I, I slowed down on videos because I want to try to focus on, like, experiences, like, only certain videos that are of interest to me, like the Top Fuel deal, filming that with the wife. And, like, that was kind of cool. It's, like, its own yeah. standalone video. For sure my racing going to Texas, like it'll be its own kind of standalone video. But I really want to try to produce like mini documentaries, I want to say, 
where they're like maybe like 25 minutes of like something like I work on a pro mod team for a, a day like you know what I mean like something like that like behind the scenes of like spend the day teching in cars with John Sears like 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 things like that where yeah. they're like individual things where that you can watch one. those by themselves as their own thing mm -hmm. and you don't have to know anything about any of the other videos nothing about me nothing like just like individual things like spend the day top fuel racing yeah those kind of things i think would be a lot more exciting or like just the experiences like be like kind of make the excuse to do these things yeah and i'm sure that would be fun too which would be nice working at yellow belly yeah Trick like question. Nobody at, works at Yellow Belly. Working at Yellow Belly. But, like, show up, like, legit. Like, have a plan. Have a guy filming. Like, not just, like, yeah. by the seat of my pants. Like, I've always done it. Yeah. And that, actually, we were talking about that earlier. It's so difficult to be like, oh, I need to film this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's I struggle with that. But like, I, everybody you, struggles with that. Yeah, but if you actually have a plan of, like, I'm trying to produce something. Uh -huh. And you know what you want the end outcome to look like. You can yeah. kind of work backwards. You're right. And I've never really had that. <laughs> yeah. But we just gotten lucky difficult. at the end outcome. I mean, that, the podcast is the same way every time. I have no idea what the end outcome is going to be. I think it went pretty decent. I'm not I, mad at it. I had a great time. I mean, this was a this was a blast. We're just over two hours, so we're probably getting to wrap it up anyways. But We can pull the shoots whenever you want, but I really appreciate you having me on. Do you use keywords in your videos? Now that I'm gonna start the conversation back to you. No, I um I I don't really use keywords, no. I don't put keywords in my videos either. Should I be? I was gonna say, should I be? I don't know. I was about to ask you if I should. I haven't used it, so maybe I should be. I, I don't know. I, I usually just look at what Mr. Beast is doing and do that. <laughs> <laughs> he ha I don't think he's used keywords. <laughs> I haven't watched a Mr. Beast video to find out, but I should check it out. They are pretty entertaining. He does a good job with his... I, I try to watch it to see, like, I try to watch across the board on YouTube to see what other people are doing and yeah. kind of stay in the know, I guess you could say. Yeah. Keep up to date I think the biggest things. Mr. Beast advice that I always, that stuck with me, right, is the whole, if someone clicks on your video, your thumbnail almost needs to match the first 15 seconds of your video or 10 seconds of so because they see the thumbnail and they're hoping for that. So give them that immediately, yeah. right off the rip, right? And then you can go into kind of jumping back earlier in the day and kind of getting to that point because you already kind of got them on the hook a little bit. But he like, spends a ton of time and money on thumbnail alone. Like oh, yeah. It's so important. Just uh, that first thumbnail and that first If you found out how seconds. I do my thumbnails. <laughs> I'm not that great at mine either. I'll usually just grab a screen grab and just. Yep. Screenshot and then go into cap cut. Everything. Yeah. Every All Jimmy Dale videos. Oh, every Jimmy Dale video has always been done on iPhone, cap cut, pro. You upload it from your phone too? Everything. Horrible. Horrible. And I live in the country, bro. And we have, I eventually I got so fed up with it that I was like, I got to figure out how bad our internet is. It's two megabyte upload. It could take 48 hours to upload a Jimmy Dell video. God and then dang. what if you upload it, and then it's like copyright strike. I didn't realize you were uploading from a phone. You don't have a laptop to do that with? How do I get it from the phone to the laptop? I guess I have a Mac. I have. A, we have a Mac? Yeah, you just airdrop it. Oh, you can airdrop to a Mac? Yeah. No shit. Or you can edit on a laptop as well. Nah, I'm gonna be all like. Ah. I like editing on a laptop. I'm also I'm I really like Photoshop. I'm pretty good with Photoshop. Mm. If you ever need anything, I. Yeah, I've had to hit up Tommy a few times. Yeah. Like, Tommy, I'm struggling. I'm struggling. Like yeah. where CapCut just wasn't strong enough to do what I wanted to happen. You know. Yeah, like I make stuff like that, like the. That looks really good. Those kind of things, little designs. Do you, do you think that cap or do you think that Photoshop is just gonna get to the point where anybody can be like, "Hey Siri, make me a Bugatti Studios logo," you know? Yeah. And it's just gonna whip it up real quick. Probably. It tried I mean, to right yeah, there. Yeah. I had to stop it. We're it's not far make that off exact thing from AI doing this kind of stuff. AI is close to editing videos as well. Yeah, like we've gotten to the point where all the small tire gangster loading screens is what we call them. All the promotional stuff is all AI. Like, we'll throw a photo into the AI, 
and it'll yeah. make it GTA style. Yep. And then we just put our small tire gangster stuff on top of it and make it, you know, cool. Yeah. It's so crazy. And the funny thing about that is, though, like, none of that's copyrighted. No. And, like, all of it's, like, free to use by anyone. Like, if you make a photo and it's done by AI, like, anybody can just take that and use it. And, oh, I'm totally cool with that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it doesn't matter. But, like, it just makes it crazy because, like, normally, like, if a photographer takes a photo that's like their photo you can't just steal yeah, it that's don't get me started on that. you could just steal ai but it'd be nice if it could edit is it the their video. photo if they took a photo of your car yeah if they took a photo of you it's their photo that they can sell yeah you see how that's a little like hey. it's questionable it's questionable you're just gonna but sell let's not talk about it because i don't want to piss off all the media guys i mean i appreciate where they are in the industry Thanks. Yeah. Thank you, guys. You make I, us look better. I haven't had any photographers on. I've been trying to get my buddy Mike Prager to come on and talk to me, but... There was hella, hella photographers in town right now. There is always a lot of them. I always feel bad for them because I know how much work they put into being traveling photographers. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them, a lot of them get a lot of sponsors, but a lot of them don't have that, like, they're missing yeah. that one next step to get a bunch of, like, sponsors on their photos. And... Going pit to pit, introducing yourself and saying, hey, I'm so-and-so. These are the types of photos I take. You know, I'll take uh, five photos of your car, you know. Like, you know, I don't, people are, they take it so extreme. They're like, they'll be edited in, like, perfect photos. Well, bro, you're the photographer. You know what an edited perfect photo looks like. The race car guy knows what a good spark plug looks like, but he don't yeah. know anything about an edited perfect photo. So you could just walk pit to pit and be like, hey, man, if you throw me 20 bucks, I'll take a few photos of your car and I'll email them to you or I'll send them to you. Like 20 bucks is fuck off money for a lot of these guys, and they'll just give you $20. You take five photos. They don't have to be edited. They don't have to have their logos or and all that stuff. Like, you, yep. you could just easily make, you know... You sh there's no reason why you shouldn't be able to make two to two thousand dollars, depending on how many people you can get. How about this for an idea, though? Why haven't they stepped up to selling videos of my car to me? Why aren't they selling me a reel or an edited video of all my passes of the day? They already got the camera. I mean, I'm a little more likely to pay for a video of a you from a so? badass camera. Especially 60 feet out, and I'm holding the wheels up. That's what like, I mean. Like, I'm in. Like, yeah, the photos are cool. I can grab a screen grab from a video if it's a good one. Yeah. Like, I'd love for, a, like, like they'll show you the baddest photo ever, and you're like, man, I really wish that was a video from right there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. I'll pay for that. Or you, like, make a badass reel of all the passes. Yeah. And you sell me that. I might be interested in buying that. My dumb ass was at Pro Mo World Series of Pro Mod, and I took a sick shot of this shadow. And my Gomer ass is taking it like this. The shadow. So, so now I'm trying to take, I'm trying to make it a thumbnail, and it needed to be took like this. And no matter what I do to aspect ratio and this, yep. that, and the other, it's never going to be taken like this. And there's no going back. So now I have this sick photo that was taken like this that YouTube's going to be like, ha, garbage. TikTok really ruined the vertical video. Why do you say that? Well, because horizontal was finally becoming the standard and then tiktok came along and now everybody's filming vertical again yeah. you know like you see all these people filming vertical for reels and shorts and tiktoks it's brutal you should post it as a short though on your youtube those what? do well the vertical stuff oh i don't film any video vertical it was well just you should vertical. post vertical content every now and then on on youtube because oh, they push that pretty hard yeah they do my like, my reels do decent on youtube yeah they do good right and I have made some controversial ones, you know. You saw the guy screaming, I'm not gay anymore, when he switches LS to, to small block, right? And I think I did see that one. Yeah. I mean, this whole podcast has been fairly controversial. I think we nailed it then. Yeah, I think um, I think this is a questionable one. This might only be on Spotify. <laughs> oh, come on. No, I'm just kidding. That's if YouTube awesome. takes it down, Spotify doesn't care, so it will... What do you think YouTube's going to take it down for? I don't think they will. I think it's going to stick. Yeah, if I it think it fits, it fine. ships, and I feel like we fit. I think from what I've heard, as long as the title and the first couple minutes don't have anything bad, 
yeah, you're good. Like The Office. Yeah. As long as it doesn't open with a scene from The Office. What an idiot. <laughs> Uh, well, we're pretty far in. Do you want to admit to any other crimes you may have filmed besides, <laughs> you know, copyright stealing the office? Have you ever, like, pirated a movie? Oh, no. <laughs> you no, ever film, like... I definitely never had LimeWire on my family computer. <laughs> you ever go into a movie theater and, like, have your camera out? <laughs> uh, I used to use Pirate Bay all the time oh, to yeah. watch all the... Pirated it's a stuff. Ballsy move there, bud. Ballsy it used move. to work pretty well. And then all these streaming platforms came out and took down Pirate Bay, basically. No, so, you know, let's just let's do a call to action and then we can pull the shoots on the whole thing, okay. right? Yeah. I've never met him, so I can't really be telling him what to do. <laughs> I can't tell anybody what to do. But Good why start. did the World Series of Pro Mod not have a Cletus flyover with red, white, and blue coming out of the smoke? Why? That is a bummer. How did we miss that? They didn't have any flyover, right? No, they didn't have any flyover. And, I mean, you know a guy with a plane. I do. He did my well, gender reveal. What are we doing here? I know. That's really rookie move. Yeah. Wes, and, we can do better. We can do better. <laughs> Guess what? It doesn't take much to bend Garrett's arm to get some attention. <laughs> <laughs> you son of a bitch, I'm in. He would have done it if you were just like, Hey, Garrett, we'd love for you to fly over. I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> Done. Doesn't yeah. take a whole lot. Red, white, and blue coming out of the... What's you it, saw them all What's it called? Week. The carbon cub? The yeah. carbon cub with red, white, and blue smoke coming out. Mm -hmm. I didn't see him on sick week. I well, was I mean, busy You saw the, the videos board. of all sick week. He was landing his plane on the drag strips. Oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. There you and, go. And that, it's bad because those planes aren't meant to land on asphalt. Like, the tires are only meant to land on grass. Like, they're very you. soft. Like Yeah, yeah, I can see that. So he was risking it just because it was cool. <laughs> For the coolness. Just because it was cool. I want to know, was Garrett doing a burnout at the end of World Series of Pro Mod at the end of the track? I don't know. Probably not. Somebody might have been. I don't know. The, the, story I, the story I heard is that it was Cletus doing a burnout at the end of the track, which just doesn't sound like him. Yeah, I mean... I don't know. It doesn't sound super like him, but it also does at the same time. But also, like, for them to be, were people that frustrated by it? Were people mad about it? Was it like a hot topic? <laughs> Only one old tech guy. Uh, okay. <laughs> don't worry about him. Yeah, that's fine then. <laughs> yeah. Rock's probably like sitting there, like, you're an asshole, Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, and huh. then what's the other call to action? So we need Cletus to fly over for the next World Series of Pro Mod. Red, mm -hmm. white, and blue smoke mm -hmm. coming out. No brainer. Second one was, uh, oh, yeah, uh, Freedom Plus. Yeah. Come and on. they should subscribe to both of our channels. They should subscribe oh, to Jimmy yeah. Dale, and they should subscribe to Bogetti Studios, like the sign says. Subscribe. Yeah. You know? Yeah, subscribe. You guys should subscribe to Jimmy Dale and Bogetti on YouTube Studios. and Bogetti Studios. Yeah, for that's sure. Probably if you're still here, you yeah. should definitely do that. Which, man, you probably ain't got nothing going on if you're still here. At well, this point. a lot of these people will put Air AirPods in and work on their car, and they want to hear something car related. Oh, uh, they threw them out when I said dirt tracks gay a long <sighs> time ago. They chunked them across. That the, is true. They <laughs> chunked them across the trailer. If you're still listening, what point did you get frustrated at? In this. <laughs> yeah, comment below when you got upset with Jimmy or Cooper in this podcast. Well, I opened it saying I don't like flashlight starts. So, I mean, we all viewership that. That's is old gone, news, dude. Bud. That's old news. Yeah, but not if they clicked in for you. Oh, yeah. If not. they were Jimmy Dale fans and they Who clicked in guy? and they're like, this idiot. <laughs> guy probably has never even cut a triple O on a flashlight. My sister loves green. <laughs> My sister loves flashlight starts. It is crazy how innovative they've gotten on the flashlight with the headlamp that's got the button behind the back and everything. You know what? Limpy's definitely done the best he could possibly do with the situation at hand for sure. But and I like Limpy. He seems oh, like a good dude. He's great. You should have Limpy on. I would love to have him on. I, I I was trying to get him on when he was down here at Immokalee, but he seemed pretty wore out. Yeah. He's, you know, I'm just stoked that we still have him around. Yeah. We don't know how much longer we're going to get that guy. He's one of those guys that you never you never know. Like, he, he could be gone next week. He could make it 10 more years. We don't know. He's had some health issues. and mm -hmm. He seems to really love the sport of drag racing. Definitely. And, and it takes a special person to be like, 
you know, same with like John Sears of like the special person that loves racing, but sees that they need that they're more important somewhere else of like, oh, I need to be the rule guy or, oh, I like we need a yeah, starter. Like, bro, John didn't get to enjoy any of the race this weekend because he was the guy at the scales all weekend long. Well, like he started racing and he saw that there was an issue with rules. Mm -hmm. So he became the rule guy and he just yeah. stopped racing. That's so a, like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like it takes a special person to be like, or to become a promoter and like you stop racing to be yeah. the promoter guy. And like, that's tough. Cause like, I really struggle not racing at my own events because in my Cletus voice, I want to win that whole damn thing. You, you know, you should go win. <laughs> yeah, I should, right? You deserve that win. There's no way to run a successful event and run your car in the same breath. It's not going to happen. There's no way. You if you a have a mildly team. successful event, maybe, but probably not. Mm hmm. But if you're really trying to blow it out of the water to make sure everybody there has a great time, you can't spend a single minute of your time yeah. trying to maintenance your car, put a bottle in it, and you don't have time for any of that. You need a real team on either on the car or on the event. Yeah. They need to be one yeah. place or another or both, like mm -hmm. Garrett. Like his events can pretty much run without him yeah. at this point. For sure. So it's kind of... That's awesome. Yeah, he's gotten to that point, though. It takes... Yeah. years of events to do I, that. I've told myself a hundred times that I'm going to build a burnout car because it seems fun, you know? It's just... That S10 would be a pretty good one. I have something even cooler than that, an 82 Ford Granada four-door. It's like an old grandma car. It's brown. Hmm. And You kind of hyped me up by saying it was cooler than an S10. Way cooler. <laughs> Yeah, because I can call it Big Mama, mm -hmm. you know? And then I was thinking about, is it going to be LS, of course, because they're cheap. And then you buy long tube headers. It's a Fox body chassis, so it's like one of those odd foxes. You buy long tube headers, and then you cut the collector off, and then you go <laughs> and you buy 90-degree bins for each one, and yeah. you can make your own zoomies. Yeah, yeah. Right? So then the it's got zoomies. The problem is LSs sound so bad doing burnouts. That's a good point. When they're on the limiter, they yeah. are miserable. Yeah, they are. Keep your LS off the limiter in a burnout, please. But it's what miserable. is your better solution? Your burnout car has LS. Yeah, and it sounds miserable. So who's got the best sound in burnout car? People that have, like, big blocks or small block Chevys. Usually. Those things don't live on the limiter, bud. The big blocks seem to. Oh, yeah? But you got to keep it right below the limiter. Like, the Australian, the way that his was is, like, his limiter back down as he got, like, farther and farther into his burnout. Hmm. So it changed as he got less grip on the tires. Do you think that having the brrrr noise, right, of, like, oh, crap, he's on the limiter right now is added bonus to your burnout score? Like, if you come in the box and you're on the dinger and you never get off the dinger no, one time? No, I think time, that's points off. You think that's points it off? It shows no throttle control. We want to see throttle control in a burnout. I yeah. want to see full commitment in my burnout. Yeah, but when it's hitting the limiter, it's inevitably losing power for a split second every time. Like you mm. could have, like you know what I mean. Like it's mm. it's pulling power every time you hit Wish the limiter. We brought this up an hour ago. We could have talked about burnouts. Well, yeah. it looks like we can do another podcast. We've got yeah. plenty of crap to talk about. I know, but yeah, when you're on the limiter, it's pulling power. When I talked to the Australian judge, he said if he hears an LS on the burnout on the limiter, points off. He's like, get out of here. Oh, he was really? the judge. He was like, I hate it. It's like nothing sounds worse than an LS on the limiter. And it th huh. it shows the lack of throttle control because anybody can just plant their foot. That was my game plan. Plant but your if foot you kind and of never have let some, out. If you blow the motor up, you blow the motor up. You got to just be like modulating of it. Not like Ooh. off, never off the gas. Yeah, yeah. But never on the limiter either, which shows a lot of control. Do you think rear brakes have a place in burnout cars or you're just no. wasting your breath? Mine has a quarter turn valve and I just turn them off. Ah. Because I still have rear brakes and I just click. Yep. And then I have a handbrake, so I have four calipers in the back. Yep. So it can you can still use the handbrake if you have to. Yeah. That's a cool way to do it. But calls to action have been made. Follow yep. Jimmy Dale. It is just Jimmy Dale. It's not Jimmy Dale Racing, right? Whatever. Jimmy Dale, Jimmy Dale Racing, it'll all come up. Buy some merch. He's shipping them all every day. Get your merch. <laughs> a tip to get Dale. some merch. JimmyDale.com. JimmyDaleRacing.com. JimmyDaleRacing.com. Yeah, April 12th and 13th, Small Tire Gangsters at the Historic Yellow Belly. So if you've listened to this podcast and you have the nuts to show up to Yellow Belly still, get your tetanus shot. 
hazmat suit. Come on out. We'd love to have you. Yep. Guys, it's going to be a good event. Let me know if I should show up. Just to hang out, at least. Just to hang out. Just to hang out. (laughs) Fly in, bud. We'll see you next time.